But yeah, today is another day for Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Whoa, clap, 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 clap. Ah, it's the second one. But I don't know anything about it. Oh, right, we were going back about over the past stuff. I legit forgot what this trial was about. Was it the... Legit, okay, I guess we'll see. They're gonna go back against it and go back for it and like, why did this happen where the guy died? I don't know. Well, let's try. Let's go. Let's see, let's see. Episode 2. The memoirs of the Clouded Kokoro. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the voice. I legit don't remember this. Oh, is this the one where? Oh, I remember this. They thought Natsume Sosuke was behind it. Oh, I remember this. Oh, I remember this. Oh, I remember this. Oh, I remember this. Oh, you don't remember anything because I don't. <laughs> I mean, like Japanese persons. I don't know. What a cover of death. I don't remember anything because I don't. I don't remember I don't remember anything because I don't. Oh, right. It was. It was a knife that that lady, that landowner, lady threw at her husband, but it like went straight through the window and into her back for some miracle. I remember that. I think. I think that's what happened, right? Unless that was a fake tune or something else. Oh wait, we're going back to Naruto Ryunosuke, what? My name is Naruto Ryunosuke. I'm a fledging lawyer, just starting out on my journey. Six months ago... Is this loud? Wait, let me move this closer. Wait. Okay, six months ago, I arrived as a visiting student of law. Oh, let me move this higher, actually. Having made the long voyage across the sea from the Empire of Japan to here, London, England. And on the way, in quite extraordinary circumstances, I made the acquaintance of a world-famous detective. Sure it all comes! Currently, I reside in the attic of the detective's own lodgings, from where I run my legal consultancy of sorts. I've successfully defended a number of clients in Britain's highest court, the Old Bailey. But since a particularly grueling and unforgettable legal battle four months ago now, I haven't returned to the courtroom. In truth, I lost my right to return. Because wait, was it because the guy was in flames and he died? Wait, was that the reason? But that epic trial was just one small part of an epic tale. A tale which now was about to awaken from some- <gasps> We're gonna go about the truth! Thanks to a letter that arrived this morning from my homeland. Wait, is this a subtle? From like... Three seconds ago? I'm hungry too. I have pasta from yesterday to eat. I didn't eat dinner. Or pasta. Pasta for dinner. Hmm. What a delicious smell wafting- wafting? Wafting? Up the stairs. It must be nearly time for breakfast. I better go down to Mr. Holmes' suite. And say good morning to the great detective and his flatmate. The one whose father was killed when I was there. Oh. 30th August, 7.28 a.m. Sherlock Holmes Suite. Oh god, wait! I remember my voice for her was super high. I don't have the energy for this in the morning. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try. I don't know. Good! I was just about to call you up, call up to you. The bacon's ready. Good morning, Iris. It smells delicious as usual. Before we eat, though, I have some news. I had a surprise to- Shh! No, no, the word, Mr. Nettle. Oh yeah, I mean, I wear different outfits. <laughs> this could be just the obtruse thing from a pre-breakfast stagnation repelling mental stimulation, my dear fellow. What's he doing? Morning to you too, Mr. Holmes. 
sarcastic. Ah, yes, I see. So that's it. He's so weird wearing that. The truth is as clear to me as day. My faculties of observation have revealed it again. What? What are you talking about? You, Mr. Nanhodo, you have, this very morning, met with a surprise. I legit just said that like three seconds ago. Well, is that not the case? Um, really, my dear fellow, it barely warrants explanation. Firstly, your hair is particularly unkempt, somewhat reminiscent of a bird's nest. Secondly, you've neglected, neglected to fasten the third button of your jacket. Clearly, when considered together, these two facts point to you having been flustered this morning. Or in a hurry. Can I talk now? But of course, of course. Though I don't look for admiration, you understand. My hair always looks like this. It's been this way since I first met you. <laughs> okay. Oh, it has. And the button was ripped off last night, if you remember. By you. Really? Pulled your button off? Actually, I just realized. If she's saying Hurley because of... Huh? Sherlock Holmes. Because Herlock? Wouldn't it be Shirley? <laughs> Wouldn't it be Shirley? Like the, uh, the actual nickname, but anyway. Ah, oh, yes, I recall the incident now. It was after supper, was it not? As the evening advanced, I picked up my violin and began to play the wailing notes of a haunting tune. But then, to my utter dismay, the third string snapped. Why did it happen? Why? Little wonder then, that in my vexation, I grabbed the first button I saw and ripped it from its proper place. Wait, how is that related? Well, I'll like it back now, please. It's troubling me that I can't fasten my jacket. Also, probably looks unprofessional. And it's troubling me that you expect me to know where it is. Somewhere thereabouts on the floor, one presumes. Helpful. What matters at the present time, my dear fellow, is simply whether or not my deduction was unerring. But Hurley, Runa said, said it when he came in, didn't he? I had a surprise this morning. See, she is the one that can read. Well, listen to people, I guess, to be more accurate. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Well, that really is a surprise. Yes. Oh, we're doing introductions now. Yes. This man is the pride of the British Empire. The famous consulting detective, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. That sounds sarcastic right now, after you say it. Not hold on. There can't be a single person in the world who doesn't know his name. Alright then, enough of this silly conversation. Come and eat this bacon before it gets cold. And I have a new herbal tea for you to try too. My latest special blend. And here we have Iris Wilson. Wilson Iris. Iris Wilson. Mr. Holmes' lodger and companion. A truly exceptional young girl who is the author of a highly successful serialization. Hmm? Serialization, yeah. Here in London. Yes, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, as published in Rance Magazine. So, Mr. Narodo, won't you put us out of our misery to die? What, what surprised you this fine morning? Uh, well... I received a letter from Japan. Oh, from Susie, you mean? Was it? Really? That's right. And she had some rather startling news, in fact. Is it good or bad? Right, bad. Ah, intriguing indeed. You must tell us all about it over breakfast. Oh yes, what fun! Oh, I can do stuff now? Wouldn't it be the same as always? Since last time, right? Wait. Is this still winter? I thought it was like four months after the last time, and that time was like snowing. Nick gets to this time of beer. Londoners seem to leave their hearth hearths hearths alight all day long, and I love it. There's something very relaxing about watching the flames lit and dance about. I understand. But I don't have a fireplace. But a fireplace in days of summertime is a waste of space. Really, no use at all. Why does is why is that orange? Rather like a great detective in days of no crimes and no criminals, hmm, really? But consider this. 
Instead of a fireplace, a frost place, that's my latest idea. An extraordinary hearth from which emanates a cool breeze in the hot summer months. What do you think? You mean AC? I, I think if you invented such a thing, your name would go down in history. The principle is extremely simple. One must, of course, light a cold fire in the hearth. I guess he's not a scientist. Even though he's supposed to have invented some stuff, but okay. Yes, of course, brilliant. Oh wait, let me let me say it in what in my tone. Yes, of course, brilliant. Okay then. The trouble is, none of the fires I built ever burn cold. How it taunts me. Y'all do know, or hopefully he knows eventually in the future, maybe that heat comes from flame. Or no, flames comes from heat, right? Or, well, actually, no, wrong one. Flames emit heat, so it's impossible for it to be cold, but okay. So, as you British say, it's a bit of a damp squib. What, what does that mean, British people? These are different pieces of evidence from cases you've solved, aren't they, Mr. Holmes? Not quite, Mr. Nuthodo, not quite. These trinkets are a selection from cases I've solved with particular ap aplomb. They are souvenirs of my success. Memories, Mr. Nuthodo. Memories. Really? So tell me about the case in which the bust of Napoleon featured. Where? Oh, there it is, on the right. Hmm. I forget. Memories, he says. Wonderful, Mr. Holmes. Wonderful. Oh, this one is actually sarcastic. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, the huge metal chest with the lace cloth laid on it, being used as a table for tea and coffee. It's very sturdy, that's for sure, and firmly locked shut. Is that what the manuscripts? Oh, never mind. That chest contains my father's detailed records of Hurley's many cases. Yes, so I've been led to believe, though personally I've never actually seen inside. And that's the way it will stay. Those papers are a secret between Daddy and me, and he is dead now. You go opening it uninvited, you might find yourself being bitten. What? Is there a beast inside there or something? Is it the... Is it the one for the chamber secret seats? Se chamber secrets sort of thing? There's something hiding. Was this the thing he pawned, I think? That machine really is imposing, isn't it? But I can never remember its name. Harry calls it his great analytics... Analytics scope. It can analyze anything at all. That doesn't really help me. What does analyzing something even mean? Oh, it was before those days, isn't it? Oh. An extremely astute question, Mr. Nathodo. Sorry? Well, as Iris said, the machine here spits out analysis results of anything with which you are you care to present it. But how to interpret those results? That's the key. And I confess, I have no idea. Ah. <sighs> Clearly, I'm going to have to construct a great analytoscope analytoscope to solve the problem. That might not help. And then next is the violin. Oops. Or the a shelf. Books, papers, scientific implements. Those shelves are sh stuffed to the gunnels. Mrs. Sutha wouldn't be able to help herself if she were here. She can't stand mess. Well, she was here before. Susie might not be able to stay in mess, but she wouldn't dare touch those shelves. Oh, why not? Everything's in intricate balance. Hurley really spends ages on it, but he does like the bouncing rock thing. If you were to touch even one thing, the whole lot would come tumbling down. Ah. <sighs> Susie noticed it was a very delicate arrangement right from the outset. Make us sound like a meeting of great minds. But the truth is, this home just needs to tidy up. Okay, I think it's everything. Oh, on this side. There's so many things to look at and talk about. I can type with my eyes shut, you know. So can I, so can I. So can we all now. I can believe it. When a deadline's approaching, you sound like a gallon gun. That reminds me of a dream I had the other day. It was such a funny one. It woke me, actually. I was typing for a whole hour in the pitch black, but I didn't make a single mistake. 
that's incredible. But then, when it got light, I found that there wasn't any paper in the machine. I predicted that. <laughs> I wonder if I'd actually been typing at all. I think you might just have fallen asleep on the job. I look forward to finding out what aroma your tea will have, Iris, every single day. Ah, uh, well, I infuse a different concoction of herbs from the garden every time, so it's never the same twice. When you call it a concoction, it sounds like more like a scientific experiment than something for tea time. Oh yes, that's because different blends can have very different properties. Some calm you down, some make you feel jolly, some give you energy. You just test it every single one. This particular blend is something quite special, so you're really in for a treat. I hope you know which one, which blend makes what then. That sounds ominous. Oh, last one. There's so many different bottles. Ah. Up there on that charming little set of white shells. Oh, do be careful, Luna. You mustn't try the contents of any of like, these bottles, even if you're hungry. I wouldn't do something stupid like that. I'm not a child, you know. Well, they all look like medicine or whatever anyway. Well, I sh wish I could say the same for Hurley. The other day, he polished off a full bottle of one of my alkaloids. Oh god. He what? He said he was hungry. I'll be extra careful. Okay. Converse. Is it breakfast time? This is the letter that arrived from Japan this morning, by International Post. Oh, how lovely! Look at Susie's beautiful writing. I wish I could read it. As in Japanese. And how is your ju judicial assistant faring, may I ask? She's very well, thank you. In fact, according to what she's written, she actually appeared as a lawyer at the Japanese Supreme Court and won a case. That's me. A week or two ago. Ah, oh, really? Oh, isn't she wonderful? I cut above your good self, my dear fellow. Hey! I've won cases too, you know. Apparently, Mr. Natsume appeared in the trial as a witness. Natsume, Natsume. No, I don't recall that name. He forgets everyone. <laughs> of course you do! We helped the man! Twice! Okay, right. Uh. You know, in those two cases that took place on Briar Road six months ago. Was it two cases? Weren't they the- I don't remember the second case then. Ah, oh, the mustache twitching man with the somewhat feline eyes and the mustache. He did have two mustaches, Hurley. Yes, who could forget those two cases? He made a very deep impression on me. Although I must confess, the details are a little hazy now. A very deep impression they made on you, clearly. Nice sarcasm, Nunosuke. So, what was this startling news penned by Mrs. Sato? Do you remember the case of the haunted lodgings, Mr. Holmes? Please recap for me. Ah, oh, yes, it's very interesting, you know. I don't feel entirely uncertain that a case of that nature did not, not occur. <laughs> He's totally forgotten that. <laughs> like me. Anyway, in her letter, Mrs. Mrs. Sato asked that we read over her case notes again and investigate further. Though it took place half a year ago, for what purpose? Because of something that Mr. Natsume said to her, apparently. He suggested that the real reason why she was called back to Japan so suddenly might have something to do with that case of the haunted lodgings. Oh, the B Jim stopped. That's not good. Oh. On Mr. Natsume's return to Japan, Mrs. Sato's father questioned him about the case, she says. And something Mr. Natsume said appeared to trouble Professor Mikotoba prompting him to send that telegram. Oh, that case? Yes. It was very strange, wasn't it? Oh, now it's mysterious, BGM. Yes. And I had compiled the whole story into a nice, neat manuscript, ready for publication, too. But then Hurley here was all funny about it, remember? He was very mean. Oh yeah, he said not to publish it. That story must not be published, you said. Very mysteriously as well. Really? I said that? Are you sure? Wait, you don't remember this at all? Do you perhaps know something about it as well, Mr. Holmes? About why Mrs. Sato was suddenly told four months ago that she had to return to Japan? 
and not me? Does he not care about me? He brought her over to like protect her, right? But like, I think it's war. I think it's something to do with war. I think it's the only thing it could be. It's been four months now since we waved Susie off at Dover. It was such a shock, wasn't it? The way she just suddenly announced that she had to go back to Japan. Indeed it was, due to a telegram she received from her homeland, I believe. That's right, telling her to return urgently. Yes, because her father had passed away. No, 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 it was just that he was suffering from a high fever, the cause of which was unknown. He's not dead. But according to this letter, that news about her father's fever was just a ruse. A ruse? So Susie's daddy lied to her so that she'd make the voyage back home? Why would he do that? I have to admit, I have absolutely no idea. But she believes it's almost certainly related to the case of the haunted lodgings. Well, okay, recap for me. Sending her back to Japan so suddenly like that. I wonder what Su Miss Susato's father is hiding. Hmm. Really, do you know what it's all about? Hmm. Ah, well, who can say? Oh, he definitely knows something. He's not saying it. What? But, but you said. Please, I have engaged, my dear fellow. My calendar is quite surprisingly full today. An astringent analysis of the matter would be excessive, I feel, even if I were quite at leisure. So, man the fort in my absence, won't you, Iris? I will, Hurley. Don't worry. See you later. He has gloves with this kimono, but okay. Oh, he scuttled off rather quickly there. Hmm, what is this about? I think perhaps Professor Mikotoba isn't the only person hiding something here. sosuke san was involved in two cases, but only one of them was forbidden from being published. By all of all people, there's the Holmes. There's yeah, something going on. Aha! Uh -huh. I found them at last! Oh, thank you, Kisan. Iris, are, are they? The notes about the case? That's right. Susie and I compiled them together. Case of the Haunted Lodgings. You want to read them, Rudolph? Yes. Let me read. I don't remember anything. Absolutely. Thank you, Iris. Oh, the bijou. I have no idea what secrets could still be hiding in the shadows of this case. But perhaps if I read over the notes again, something might come to light. Legion's loud though. That's a spirit! And so, wait, that sounds like the end of a thing. And so... Iris and I decide to read over the case notes together, again together. Everything from what happened to our investigation in that fierce battle in court. That follow- wait, 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 recap for me too! Living every detail. I just need to find a clue. I have all the time in the world because of course what I'm no longer allowed to practice law in the courts of Great Britain oh why 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 I just suddenly just picked out oh now I'm flashbacking oh okay there we oh no yeah flashback okay thank you it was six months ago a mysterious incident that unfolded on the wintry streets of London Legit, why is there a fireplace in summer then? A young woman was found lying on the snowy pavement of Briar Road with a knife in her back. I remember this. Fortunately, her life was spared, as she was unconscious for several days following the incident. We never took a look at her face, I feel like. The fog was thick, and nobody saw her attacker. But, by a cruel twist of fate, a visiting Japanese student was walking behind her at the time, and was duly arrested. That man was Suzuki-san, and the man who effected his arrest was Mr. Holmes. Believing in our compatriot's innocence, Suzuki-san and I decided to represent Suzuki-san in court. And, after a grueling trial of many twists and turns, we finally managed to prove his innocence. Wait, what was wrong with this? Joyful, joyful, joyous jubilant jubilation was the man's reaction after the trial. But his jubilant jubilation was short-lived. Wait, why? He received a telegram from Mr. Holmes the following morning. 
victim of the Briar Road stabbing has regained consciousness. Free to Bart's at once. Okay. Also, Sunasan and I summoned a handsome, handsome, and headed immediately to the hospital. Wait, wait, what, what happened after that? I don't remember. Wait. Wait, we're still in the flashback. We never had this scene, did we? I don't remember. 21st of February, 5.30 a.m. St. Bartholomew's Hospital Recovery Ward. She has a mouse in there. There you are, at last! Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Is she a painter? I think not. Oh! Oh wait, let me, let me change your outfit. I forgot. I was gonna change it. But she was such a dashing guy that I like changed it back to other outfit. Back to title. Um Wait. Oh, they show the they show the other one. Okay. He, he can be like that. Yeah, I'm gonna change him on to other outfits. Okay. Now we can resume. You're late. What on earth took you so long? Oh, she's so cute. Your, your telegram only arrived at 5 o'clock, Mr. Holmes, and it's a 20 minute ride to the hospital. That's right, and it's five, half past five now. I think we made a very good time. The time is utterly irrelevant. The fact is, I have been waiting for what has felt like an eternity. That's your problem. Ah. <sighs> In point of fact, I myself was awoken at four this morning by a telegram boy, and feeling it was somewhat unjust that I alone have been aroused at such an hour, I sent one to you. Wow. Let's suffer together. Well, thanks for that. Anyway. We're here now, so the victim is over there. She's only just regained consciousness. Oh yeah, we never talked it. We never had this. You should introduce yourselves. And I shall observe from here. So that's the lady who was found on the snow-covered pavement with a knife in her back. Her name is... Ah, uh, yes. Here we are. The screen. Examine. Look, there's a photograph in this frame here. Hmm. Maybe, maybe it was dropped because of her identity. And that's the only thing. It was like, it was such like a random thing that like, why is he like covering this case? I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Oh wait, one message me. Okay. Oh yes, it's a pig. <clears throat> Wait, my voice is. Hmm. Okay. Oh yes, it's a picture of a young gentleman. Hmm. He looks to be about the same age as Miss Green, I would say. I, how do y'all know ages? I can't tell from faces what age they are. Perhaps a young woman's special someone. Do you think? My, my, Mr. Nanahodo. I didn't know you had the sense for matters of the heart. Not in the least. I sincerely said the first thing I thought of. I've been just boyfriend or whatever, but okay. I guess I used special someone to be more. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's an art thingy. Is she a model? This rounded wooden figure isn't the most charming, is it? Shh. Shh. Dude. Obviously, the model is someone in the room. Don't talk so loud. Uh, I don't think that's a decoration, Mr. Nanolo. It's an artist's, artist's mannequin, I believe, used in practicing sketching the human form in different poses. Really? It's not exactly what you'd call a typical figure for that purpose, though, is it? No, I suppose not. I confess I've never seen one quite so full-figured before. 
Well, if you want to draw a full-figured person, it's the right tool for the job. Mm, the mouse is definitely one that's grabbing my attention. Eek! A mouse! It's not all though. An enormous mouse! Hmm, vermin in a hospital. That doesn't seem the best. That looks like a very healthy specimen, doesn't it? It's very plump! I know, that's cute. I'm not sure we can say that's down to the excellence of this facility, if that's what you were thinking. Oh, I thought it'd be her pet for them. That must be a bag of Miss Green's personal belongings. She would have been brought directly here after she was found stabbed on the pavement, though. I expect a friend or family member probably brought some things for her. Alright then, let's see what's inside. Change of clothes, no doubt. Wait, why are you looking inside someone's bag? What the heck? Privacy? No, Mr. Nathaldo. You must never scrutinize a young maiden's personal belongings. The young maiden might have chocolates or biscuits or caramel. Wait, what? Oh, because I'm hungry. What? Oh. Ah, this looks like the Peyton... Uh, Peyton. Patient's... Ah. Pat uh, patient's treatment notes. Let's see. Do not feed. What? I think it's the mouse. <laughs> what is this place? A zoo? You know, I seem to remember seeing an almost identical sign in a local park. With the pigeons, yes. This is a person. Poor woman. I hope she hasn't read this. <laughs> ah. I think it's for the mouse. Um, um good morning. Hello, um, I'm um, Narohodo Ryunosuke from, or Ryunosuke Narohodo, I guess I would say here, from the Empire of Japan. I'm trying to figure out what voice I want her to be. Oh no, what? What's in your knife, that? Are you the man who. No, 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 I'm a lawyer. Oh, I might have want to kill Jimmy. <laughs> or try to stab you. And I'm Susato Mikotoba. Pleased to meet you. Oh no, was was it your knife then? Are you the one? No, 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 no. I assure you, I'm Mr. Narodo's judicial assistant. We heard that you regained consciousness and wanted to come and come to give you our best wishes. Be best wishes for for me? Um, thank you. I'm I'm Olive Olive Green. Wow, unique name. I'm an artist. Oh, she's an artist. Well, no, no, that's not right, is it? What I mean is, I'm trying to be an artist. Well, what I really mean is, I desperately want to be an artist. Oh, I made some random voice for her, and it came out this way. But the truth is, I don't have any talent. I, I know I don't. It's no wonder I was stabbed in the back. No, no, that's not what happened. I, I don't think that's related, actually. Gosh, this young woman seems to bend over backwards to put herself down. Seeing as we're here, we should ask her about what happened from her perspective, I suppose. Oh wait, I want to go back! Oh, okay, I'll talk about that later. There are lots of bottles in the cabinet, aren't there? Do you think it's safe to keep them like that? <laughs> if you were a patient here, I... Wait, wait, I, do, I just got her voice wrong. <laughs> if you are a patient here, I feel you'd take some medicine by mistake when you're half asleep. That is a worry, but at least the cabinet has a lock, even if it's only a flimsy-looking one. Oh, I've no doubt you'd manage to unlock that somehow while you were half asleep as well. There are limits even to what I can do when I'm half asleep, you know, Mrs. Seto. Mm. Oh? Another patient? Ah, this looks like the treatment notes for whom, whoever's occupying this bed. Let's see. Do not permit to run around the hospital. Wait, what? What is this hospital? The patient doesn't seem to be here at the moment, so... Here she is probably running around the hospital then. Oh dear, how worrying. What's worrying is why they haven't discharged the patient yet. Well, if they're running. Maybe a mental thing, I don't know. Or something that's not up in their feet, you know? There are all sorts of medicine in this cabinet, look. I'm not sure if it's safe leaving them in reach of everyone like this. Yes, you're right. You can imagine if you're a peckish. You might try a whole bottle or two. No, what? Well, at least there seems to be a little lock to secure the cabinet doors. I don't imagine that would stop you if you were hungry. I worry that you'd break the lock. Hunger doesn't turn me into criminal, you know, Miss Mrs. Otto. 
gosh. Believe me. Please believe in me some more. Okay. I was suddenly be struck in the back by a blade as you were walking along the pavement. What a terrible experience you had, Miss Green. I know you can't lie on your back when you sleep. It, it, it was so cold that day, and the fog was so thick, I couldn't see a thing. That was four days ago now, I think. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I'm afraid you've been comatose all that time. But the case has been solved, hasn't it? While well, I've been here in the hospital, I mean. Indeed it has, my dear madam. Spectacularly by none other than I, Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Holmes, as you well know, it was Mr. Nataholdo's hard work in court that solved the case. Are you yet to hear what happened, Miss Green? Yes, I'm afraid so. A gentleman from the police force is supposed to be coming to fill me in shortly. Oh, I see. Me coming around seems to have made everyone frantically busy. I'm so sorry. I should never have regained consciousness. No, no. It was selfish of me. No, that's not me. Oh, no! We're all so relieved that you're on the men, Miss Green. Really, we are. With that kind of attitude, maybe her surname should be Blue, not Green. Nice joke. Nice joke. About yourself. So, you're an artist, are you, Miss Green? Oh, no, no. I couldn't possibly claim that. I'm a fledging artist at best. I mean, I'm a student of art, really. At the Thorndike Academy of Fine Arts. Oh man, I count those artists already. Oh my, an Academy of Fine Arts. Great Britain is such a wonderful country. Tell me, Miss Green, do you live hereabouts? Oh no, actually, I don't deserve it, but I have a little flat on Brixton Road. I see. How very interesting. Oh no, I is it? Brixton is some ten stops away on the underground from here. And Thorndike Academy is a mere three minute walk from Brixton Town Center. Oh, so why was she there? Does that matter, Miss Holmes, Mr. Holmes? Perhaps not, but Briar Road is a far less salubrious part of town by comparison, dwelt in it by those of inferior means. Including the Maleficent Mr. Mustache. Inferior means? I suppose this like sound does fit the bill. Oh, you mean like poor? It struck me as somewhat out of the ordinary for a young fine art student to be walking in such a district. Is it where, like, art is, like, still not a good way to earn a living, so it's like only rich people who can do it? That's all. What's this? She suddenly clammed up. Oh, she's hiding something. Mr. Holmes, you should be ashamed of yourself prying into a young man's private affairs. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Dude, oh dear me, do forgive me. Um, if you don't mind. I'm being discharged shortly, so I need to pack up my things. Oh, yes, of course, we won't keep you. Thank you so much, Miss Green. Mmm, suspicious. Very suspicious. Is there Mr. Narfodder here? Mr. Narfodder? Nearer fodder now? Well, um, if you're looking for Mr. Fernando Hodo the lawyer, that's me, but... Oh, Mr. Nara fodder. Good. This is for you. This is a message from Mr. Saucy Nutsmeg. Who's that? Oh. <laughs> Mr. Nutsmeg? Sent a message? To me? But why would a policeman be delivering a message from Mr. Nutsmeg? Exactly. What's going on? What's this Scotland Yard constable doing playing... Delivery boy at the time at this time in the morning. Ah, uh, what are you waiting for? Let me see that. Oh wait, it's for me. What the heck, man? It's my mail. Oh. Well, this is most unexpected. Something wrong, Mister Holmes? What? Is something wrong, Mister Holmes? He says. Have you not seen this note? Because you're holding it. Give me the note. No, how could I have? Nice to pull me. Nice come back. It would seem that London's criminals have no intention of letting the great detective rest. A new case calls. A case of murder, no less. We must depart at once. Wait, what? Murder? Wait, do we? Do we skip this in the previous one? We would have seen this. Call a cab. Time is of the essence. But the trouble is, 
We had to read Mr. Natsuma's note. I was thinking we ought to pay him a visit in his lodgings since we did. That would be entirely convenient. Convenient? What do you mean? It's all here in the note, my dear fellows. The murder we must investigate took place at Mr. Mustache's lodgings. Wait, what? Oh, he said exactly what I said. Wait, what? A hail of fire. Uh, what? Fiat? Fiat? Something. At once. Yeah, I don't remember this. It was only yesterday that Sosuke san was in court. And we were dispelling doubts about his innocence. And now, the very next day. There's a murder at the man's own address? He may very well be the unluckiest man alive. Or so it seemed to us at the time, but we were soon to discover it was worse than we thought. Well, that's still unluckiest man at the time. Sounds like to be continued, but it's not. 21st February. It's in the flashback. 7.18 a.m. Mr. Natsuma's lodgings. Round floor. Who is this? What on earth? Oh my, the gentleman is deceased, without question. He's dead. Be on up, call the police. Look, 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 Why look, 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 no early bird should catch a worm like this. Wolf and worm without wiggle. I see you in high spirits again this morning. This morning, Mr. Mustache. Yeah! Not the horrible her luck. Sherlock Holmes. To shove off. Show yourself the door. I never invited you. Mr. Holmes came here with us. I'm quite sure he'll be able to help you, Mr. Natsume. I'm entirely at your disposal, Mr. Mustache. What can I do for you? Oh, this guy. Here they are already. Busy buddies. Oh, Inspector Gregson. What a pleasant surprise. Pleasant, is it? Gives me heartburn every time I see your face at the crime scene, Holmes. Ha! I deduce, Inspector, that your heartburn is a result of your excessive consumption of dry food. Or uh, dry food. Fried food. Um, good morning, Inspector. This is a crime scene. Don't go touching anything. Or good morning to you too, Sunshine. Examine. Well, let's look at the corpse first. Who is this guy? Where is the hands off? You're gonna mess up the crime scene. Oh, um, no, I just want to look. That's all. No chance, I know you're kind. You must it up just by looking at it. That is true for... For... My, was it microphysics? Was that the word? I forget. You know, the one with atoms and stuff. That is very true. Ugh, someone's in a bad mood. Oh. There's certainly some bad... There's certainly some bad air in here, isn't there? Oh, ha 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 ha. All right. It sounds like I better talk to the inspector first and try to create some favor. Let's talk to this guy. What a terrible thing to have happened. It's only been three days since I was arrested for the incident on the pavement outside. I don't remember his voice. And then, having finally regained my freedom, it starts happening all over again. Endless existence of excruciating experiences. So the victim lived here on the ground floor, and your room is just one story up, isn't it? Yes, that's right. In a way, we were neighbors, I suppose. Did you know the victim? Were you friends? Don't tell me you guys fought. And were enemies. And then now you're the prime suspect. Great. What's the matter with suzuki san now? It was an innocent enough question, wasn't it? Why does he seem so shaken by it? Well, uh, uh, well, well I, I suppose he, he, he wasn't a complete s stranger. But, but, but did he ever invite me to, to, to his room? N never. On my honor, I swear it. What an extreme reaction. You're probably wishing you'd never asked now, aren't you? 
Mr. Ned, hold on. When we found him here, I felt wretched, which is why I sent word asking you to come. Threw that inspector over there! How did the inspector guy first? But okay. Hmm? Oh, oops. Hands off. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, I can't. I have to talk to him first then. Okay. Invert. Eh? Oh. So, Inspector. What was the victim's name? Who was he? Mr. William Shames Shakespeare. Okay, I go with Sham Spear in this case. <sighs> of course, it's another famous person somewhere in history that I don't know if they're actually in the same time period, supposedly, even though Sherlock Holmes is fiction technically. And that's Miss Losiki, was it? Was? Is? Still a real person? I actually don't remember. Mr. William Sham Spear. He was the lodger here. As you can probably tell, he was an actor. A bit of a dead loss as it happens. Wait, actor or like scriptwriter? Which one was he? I forget. I thought he was a scriptwriter. Or just dead. Mr. Shamspear. It was the Grand Lord, old Mr. Gerdeb, and the old other lodger, Mr. Natsume, who found him. Bella didn't rise up at his rise at his usual hour, so Gerdeb got worried and kicked the door down. But doesn't Mr. Gerdeb have a bad leg? I know, right? Ah, uh, yeah, you're right, bud. You're right there. It was that jittery Japanese hunchback over there who actually did the, did the kick. Really? It's like a song. He looks weak as hell, but okay. The victim was pretty hard up, it seems. He even done some time inside for petty crimes. He had no money, no place to go, and no friends. His only acquaintances were the people in this house. Miserable life and a miserable end to it. So, what exactly is Mr. Natsume still doing here? He's not involved in investigation, so shouldn't you have sent him away from the crime scene? Even if he's a culprit, you should send him away. Well, not saying it's because the fella looks odd or anything, or that he'd act suspicious, because he does. But I thought it would be prudent to take a statement from the culp- I mean, cohabitor. You nearly said culprit there, didn't you? Oh dear, Mr. Natsume appears to be under suspicion. Again. It certainly seems that way. He does just come across as such an odd fella, doesn't he? Poor man. How unfortunate. Anyway, I can't say much until the coroner gets here. But I don't think the fella's been a goner that long. The body's still warm. Even if the inspector would allow it, I don't think I could bring myself to touch a dead body. Can I? Can I? Can I? Oh, I can't? No! What? Wait, what? I thought I just talked to the guy. Uh, talk to the inspector first. I did! What else is there? Wait a minute. How'd you. Why? Um, uh, Mr. Holmes, what are you doing? Huh, you only need to observe it, my dear. Observe, observe to know it, my dear fellow. Investigating, naturally. Looks like you're posing with the stage. There's nothing natural about that pose. Only well, alpha kind of fits, kind of. Mr. Holmes, have you made some maker miraculous discovery? Patience, my dear madam. Patience. I've not been here in this room five minutes. So far, all I've managed to, to deduce is what actually happened <laughs> so far. My goodness. But isn't that everything we need to know, Mr. Holmes? <laughs> it's like, I like how he's like, He's obviously bragging, but he's obviously trying to seem seem like he's not bragging. Like, he's trying to make it seem like he's not bragging, but he's actually bragging. Yeah. Hmm, now that you propose the idea, I believe one could indeed see it that way. At the present time, I have managed to draw two incontrovertible conclusions. The first, that there was a physical struggle here last night in which a victim fought for his life. Yeah! Huh? Huh? Mr. Natsume. What's wrong? Is something that Mr. Holmes said significant somehow? No, 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 don't mind me. Forget I was here. Dude, he knows something. I don't know what he knows. In my second conclusion, is that 
There was a poison lingering in the air here last night that passed the victim's lips. No nonsense. Uh, so he was here with the victim last night. All right, isn't that some man? What? Are, why are you acting so extremely, so extremely to Mr. Holmes' deductions? No, 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 no! Please pretend I'm not here. Invisible, ineffable. It's good, but insignificant. Not when you make, when you're loud. Impossible to ignore. You must tell us everything, Mr. Holmes. Spare no detail. Okay, so we're gonna be one of the wrong ones, and I have to fix them, fix it, don't I? But of course. With the theatrical tragedy before us be unraveled by my two great deductions, presented for your pleasure in two acts. We've heard some truly stunning great deductions from Mr. Holmes in the past. No doubt this will be no exception. What miracles will unfold before our eyes this time? Yeah, what wrongs? So, my dear fellows, for your delight and wonder, let the curtain rise. For Mr. Hol for Sherlock Holmes, logic and reasoning spectacular. Act 1. Oh. The game is afoot. I haven't checked all the evidence yet, though. I'll finally see his face. Careful observation of the victim reveals to us the events that transpired in this disconsolate room last night. Home well, at the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of poison. Mm. Next to the victim, we notice a large dining plate which contains, you observe, butter. One half of a sizable bar of soap. Meaningful? Into the is that soap? Is it not butter? I legit don't know, can't tell. Why is the soap set so purposely upon the dish? Like the victim's last supper, in fact, yes. Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course, the fork reveals the answer. It appears that the young man's appetite was his undoing. Taking up arms in the form of his cut cutlery, the victim engaged in deadly battle for his life. Yet the struggle against his hunger was in vain, for in the end, he couldn't resist devouring the slippery feast. Oh, you should give me all about it. Oh, you got those animals. Oh, you got those animals. Oi. But London's foul soap is besmirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plate. What is, what is he talking about? The soap and the lather about the young man's mouth are too perfectly matched to ignore. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to excessive ingestion of foul soap. You just mentioned poison. What? So personally, I have a greater interest in the taste of foul candle wax, of course. Oh, they changed the outfit. Poisoning from soap ingest. He just said poison. Oh, unless he meant the soap is the poisoning. The cause of death identify we proceed to act two, where we ponder the next question. Was this suicide or murder? The audience will recall that death occurred during the victim's last supper. Did the man dine and die alone? This single teacup suggests the answer. There's so many question marks. To draw a conclusion on such a me on such meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. The careful criminal should have absconded with his own cup to cover his tracks. Well, allow me to lift a veil of doubt, my dear fellow. Oh my god, so it's like he's not. Stop. You're giving yourself away. Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock. Is that broken? Look, they're trying to break the lock. No force open now. At the time of the incident, this door was locked because we you opened it from the outside. What? And the sole key was in the victim's pocket. In other words, when the victim consumed the poison, he must have been alone. Alone with this inferior soap, from whence wafted an inferior scent. How he eats soap. And with that accurate aroma lingering in the air, the victim met his tra end in tragic solitude. Wait. Okay. We can take comfort only in the fact that his soul was well cleansed on his way to the hereafter because he ate soap. Okay, I have no possible perpetrator present. There's so many things wrong, but I don't even, don't even know because I didn't even look at the crime scene yet. This concludes the final act of Sherlock Holmes' Great Deduction.
Oh, you hear my mouse clicking, or my my controller low. Oh, nice sound of eating. There's just one thing, Mr. Holmes. You were disposed to identifying just one thing, aren't you, Mr. Nanahodo? Pray, what concerns you? Well, no matter how hungry he was, do you really think the man would have eaten soap? It is quite apparent that this man had barely a penny to his name. It is a curious thing, but to one so but to one so destitute, soap can suddenly appear quite irresistibly appetizing. I don't think so, but okay. I guess I wouldn't know. How extraordinary! In truth, I have tried a little soap myself in the past. Oh, you did? You've eaten it, you mean? My dear fellow, it was quite it was some time ago. My postulation was that it would cleanse my gut. Oh my god. It's like the drink bleach to cleanse your back the virus step thing thing again. Oh my god, in a different format. And did it? As I writhed in agony on the floor and split the contents of my stomach, yes, I believe it did. Well, that's not a lie. Experience taught me a valuable lesson. Soap is quite poisonous. It has an unpleasant taste and leads to great discomfort. In summary, I cannot recommend it. I don't think it's edible. Believe me, I wouldn't eat it even if you did. There's something that troubles me as well, actually. Oh, what's that? It's Mr. Natsume. Ugh. I couldn't help noticing him shuddering and quivering out of the corner of my eye. Almost as if Mr. Holmes' seductions touched a nerve somehow. No, 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 well, that clenched teeth episode didn't last. I think, judging by Mr. Natsuma's reaction, the great detective's deductions may need some gentle corrections in order to reach the actual truth. Yes, Mr. Holmes' observations and deductions are sometimes a little too sharp. He has a tendency to hit the nail on the side of the head and drive it in at an obtuse angle. When he does that, it falls to us to straighten things out. In other words, he's not good, but okay. Alright then, let's see what we can do. Yes, we must pick out the key words in Mr. Holmes' quite brilliant deductions. And discreetly exchange them or something that makes a little more sense. How can you discreetly do that? Also, that's also you saying that they're all wrong, but okay. If we can do that... I'm sure we'll arrive at what Mr. Holmes meant to say in the first place. No, no, he just got it wrong. What? In that case, are you ready for the second performance of the day? Once again, my dear fellows. For your continued delight and wonder... Curtain rise for Sherlock Holmes Logic and Reasoning Spectacular Act 1. Okay, let's do it. This part's the fun part, actually. Hold it, Mr. Holmes. Hmm. Okay. Holmes reveals to us the events that transpired in this discarded room last night. Foam at the mouth is these clearly indicates the use of poison. It could just be soap is what I thought, actually. Next to the victim, we notice a large dining plate, which contains, you observe, one half of a sizable bar of soap. Why is this soap? I guess the, re the reason why soap is not um in orange means that it's cr actually soap and not butter, because I originally thought it was butter. Why is the soap perfectly set? He liked the victim's last supper, in fact. The bearded man was about to eat it. Of course, the fork reveals the answer. Well, you can't deny that a fork implies the man was eating something or about to eat something. Yes, that's true. If I were to decide to eat some soap, I should prefer to use a fork than to attempt it with chopsticks. And of course, only half of the bar of... Is that half? That's a big bar of soap. Then. Half means that half. Where did the other half go then? And of course, only half of the bar of soap is left on the tape on the plate. But there, been, but might there not be some other explanation? Something material that proves whether or not the man really ate some soap. Hmm. I suppose you eat soap with a f fork, wouldn't you? I don't think it's a question of which implement you use. You shouldn't eat so full soap. But then why? Why does the man have a fork in his hand? Oh dear, I understand your frustration, Mr. Nanahodo. Please don't take it out on me. The point is, if we decide the man used this fork to eat the soap, 
I wouldn't be changing Mr. Holmes' deduction. So we really ought to consider some other clues. Lol, she's like scolding me. Oh, the cup. What's the cup doing? There's like a, something at the edge. You think he was drinking tea with this stuff? The cup's empty, so there's no way of knowing. Ah, how about this for an idea? Perhaps the cup was full of water. And he was dissolving soap in it so he could gulp as gulp as hmm? gulp as much down as possible. Oh, okay. Please remember that he may not actually have been the soap lover that he been made out to be. Hmm. Oh, there's the other half. So you're just gonna break the soap. Look, there's more soap on the floor here. Mr. Shamspear must really have loved the stuff. Let's not jump to conclusions, Mr. Nadahodo. Look closely at this soap. Do you see that it would fit together perfectly with the half bar on the table? What the? How can that be? Wait, that means he didn't eat it if it's full. I think there are two halves of the same bar that broke apart. What's this over here? Wait. Oh, it's half. Wait, is there a way to like... Zoom out or something? I forget. I thought there was a way. Wait, I forgot. There was a way to do something. I forgot what it was. I'm pressing all the buttons I can, but there is none. But I guess there isn't. Am I missing something? Hmm, I don't see anything else. Uh, it wasn't- there weren't- he wasn't about to eat it because there's the other half. Let's try this one. Yeah, if there's the other half, that means he didn't eat it. Oh, my new outfit. Why do I have this tiny, tiny mouse thingy on my shoulder? Of course, the other piece of soap reveals the answer. It being the other half of the soap on the table. In short, the victim was not eating soap at all. But it's obvious, really, for no depths of hunger could drive any man to attempt to eat soap, <laughs> says him. <laughs> you struck a nindus. He doesn't have the right to say that. Even I, with my unquenchable thirst for practical knowledge, took only a single bite. But that begs the question of how the man was poisoned, because there's no sign of any food on the table. An excellent observation, Mr. Nodholdo. And one that furnishes us with the answer we seek. For London's foul soap is to be smirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plate. I think it's the cup. He looks like he spit it out after he drank it. That's why it's like spilt. Miss Holmes is still pushing the soap argument then. Perhaps he's suggesting the man lick the soap rather than eat it. If soap in London is that poisonous, I don't think I want to be washing my hands with it. It's all the same thing. There are no signs of any food in this room at all. Of course, food isn't the only thing that passes people's lips, is it? Oh, dude, I thought that already. Do I even need to, like, pick it? I just need to do that. Yeah, I only need to go through it one by one. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the tea cup. Indeed, cups have been a vessel of choice for practicing poisoners over centuries. And it would appear that this victim drank every last drop. Well, I mean, he spilled it, so no, he didn't. There's no sign of food anywhere in the room. Which leads us to the Im un immutable conclusion. Wait, does that mean? Don't tell me. It's like the drink that that's what it looks like he got, and he's the one that gave the drink to the guy, and then the guy died after he drank it, so he's like, oops, now I'm the prime suspect. I think that's what's going on now. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to ingestion of poison contained in this tea cup. Oh, that was fast. Wait, this is topic one. Cause of death, then finally proceed to act two, yada yada. Was it suicide or murder? The writings recall that death occurred during the victim's last supper. The man dined and died alone. This single teacup is just the answer. Oh, I actually don't know about that part. I need to look at other parts in the room. 
Ah, oh, the western vessel for infused hot drinks again. It's already featured heavily in our deduction so far. Yes, we can imagine that shortly before his death, Mr. Shamspear was having a drink of tea. There would be nothing remarkable about that. What troubles me? It was Mr. Natsuma's reaction when he heard Mr. Holmes suggest it. There's more to this deduction than it seems. We must closely examine the scene of the crime again for some more new more clues again. What? Oh. The second cup, lol. So there's two people. It's it's another western vessel for it's a teacup! And it is it too is empty. Given that he's actually holding this one in his hand, we can assume that this is the cup from which Mr. Shansu was actually drinking. But if that's the case, this changes everything. Everything we've deduced up to now is turned on its head. I have a bad feeling about this. I almost don't want to say it. Yes, I know exactly how you feel. Yeah, okay. There's another person in the room. Did a man dine and die alone? This other teacup suggests the answer. Yes, there were two teacups in this room all along. Well, what do you mean there were? There still is. <laughs> in other words, this is a strong indication that at the victim's last supper, there was a guest present. At the very least, we can now say with certainty. Also, we're at wrong voice. But somebody else was here in this room last night, taking tea with the victim. Oh my gosh, I'm spare case. I've been jumping around streams like crazy today. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for joining. Randomly. like, Sam Spear, who died before I even met him. Thinking Solsiki is the prime suspect for every single thing that's happening. Like, dude, you need to like maybe not go out ever, like ever. Stay, stay at home. I think. Oh, that's why he's in Japan, I guess. What, what, what are you talking about? Uh, actually, unbelievably, unjustly, unreasonable. To draw a conclusion on such meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. In which case, what more can we deduce about this possible guess at the table? It's him. Well, allow me to lift a veil of doubt, my dear fellow. <laughs> He's a beautiful boy. His hair reminds me of Sherbert. <laughs> Sherbert. Do you mean to say you know who exactly was in this room at the time of the victim's death? I don't know, man. Who could be more suspicious than, like... The guy next to us, but like, maybe there's another person. Okay. Just be like there. I'm not sure I like where this deduction is going now. I'm afraid it's, it's too late to go back to the Halcy was it Halcyon? Halcyon? Is that how I pronounce it? The peaceful. Days of eating too much soap. But the identity of the guest who was here in here last night when the victim passed away is something I have a very bad feeling about. Well, you can try to ignore your feeling ignore your feelings, but we cannot ignore the truth, Mr. Nathodo. Halcyon, okay. Thanks. No, I suppose not. Time to look around again. Uh... Is this a broken lock? It looks like they just try to break down the door. Do you call that broken lock? I say like broken... Door. Okay. Oh dear, the latch is most definitely broken, isn't it? The door was kicked in by Mr. Natsume, according to what Mr. Gearadep told the inspector. Wait, wouldn't this be, be the part where it got kicked in? Who knew his short, thin little legs had so much strength in them? I'm not sure the length of his legs in, is in any way significant here. Yeah, she can break this door down, Susato. Perhaps it says more about the poor state of the door than about Mr. Natsumi's strength, actually. Careful, if he overheard that remark, he'd almost certainly have a lively response. I don't know, can this broken lock really tell us anything about who was here? Or who was here? I think it's alcohol. It's probably... Okay, I'm just gonna guess. Actually, no, I don't think so. It'd be like, let's say, a Japanese, like, bottle of alcohol. And then it'd be like, oh, he got it because it's a souvenir and he wanted people to try it or something. It's empty. Empty of liquid, but full of air. That makes you think, doesn't it? it makes me think that you're full of hot air. We should be thinking about who else was in the room at the time. Hello, she'd like, stop joking. Bother. So that the sounds quip in response was cleverer than my original riddle. Well, that's it? Oh, fine. Pop books. <gasps> was it the books he had that night? Or in the other room? At first glance, it seems that the only things in this room are the makeshift stage and the costumes. I overlooked these three books initially. 
I wonder what they are. Let's see. The titles read A Picture of Monsieur Lecoq, Canterbury Yearnings, and a Meal for Gabriel. Wait, I'm sure I've heard those titles before. It could just be an incredible, incredible coincidence, but they're the exact same three books that Mr. Natsume purchased the other day. Wow, oh, such a mir mir like such a coincidence. What? Yes, on the day of the for unfortunate incident when Miss Green was stabbed, Sosa Kisan had just been to a bookshop and bought them. That's right. And now those three titles are here in the room of the victim. Yet Mr. Natsume claims never to have been here before. What, what does this mean, do you think? I, I really don't know what to make of it. Uh, uh, hmm. You're not suspicious at all. Oh. What the heck? Oh, never mind, just the door. Nothing else? Let's click the candle just in case. Even Mr. Shamspear didn't eat candles, it seems. He probably established that he didn't eat soap either. Ah, do you think perhaps... I guess brought this candle here last night? I think it's probably his own. Even if he did or he or she did, does it reveal anything about the guest's identity? Good point. There goes my idea. Stuffed out like that candle will be. You sigh so deeply, Mr. Nadhodo. You're in danger of blowing out the flame. Oh, I thought it was the happiness. You sigh about your happiness. Whatever. He sure does eat paper. Wait, what? Is this something? Oh, I think... Wait, is that something to tell later? Later on? What is this? Anyway, but yeah, just in case, like, no, no spoilers. No spoilers. If they are spoilers, if not, then it's all good. Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the fam is the pile of familiar books. Quite so, it's no mere coincidence that these three titles are here in this room. It's the link to the truth you should have said that before them. Yeah. Mr. Natsume. You purchased these books four days ago at a second-hand bookshop. That, that's just a coincidence. Oh, sorry, it's a funny deal mentioned. Remember about him, forgot what is mentioned. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. In that case, you will be able to bring him, bring the same three titles from your own room, will you not? This very moment, I, I threw them away. Unless it has my name on it. In the serial number. You can't prove it's his. Even though it's really, really, really of a big coincidence. No, never. Non negotiable. If you can't bring your own copies here, it proves that these three books are in fact yours. Well, it's really. Mm, it's not conclusive evidence, but it's evidence. Mm, uh. Why is he at the post? Having purchased the books four days ago and returned to your lodgings, you're, you were arrested the very next day. So you could conceivably have brought the books here on that evening, but you never mentioned that. In other words, you could have only brought these three books here to the victim's room. Oh my god, what's with him and his poses? Wait, what? What the heck? <laughs> That's so random, so what? Last night, having returned to your lodgings after the trial concluded at the Old Bailey. In short, there was only one possible conclusion. The victim died here in this in his room last night as a result of poisoning. In that same night, the victim had a visitor. And that visitor Look, Nunos gets so tired. Why is only this time he looked kinda cool? Nunosuke. Was you, Mr. Natsume Sosaki. Sosaki Natsume. Also, wait, why do you put- they put wine in a teacup? That's the part I don't understand. Because the wine bottle's empty, right? Or I assume it's wine. I, could, I guess it could be like water or something, but... Why in a teacup? Maybe he had no cups. Okay, actually, that makes actually quite a lot of sense. Oh. Uh, wait, wait. And that concludes the final yada yada. Okay. Something romantic between them. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Well, at this point, one of the guys dead, so I'll never know, probably, because he's dead. Wait, why is my- wait. 
My controller. Okay. Not again! Not again! Not again! Not again! Well then, Miss Natsume. What appear you're gonna to have to accompany me down to yard again. <sighs> but, 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 wait! Hold your horses! Yes. Door! Key! Locked! Entry! Exit! Entirely! Impossible! Ah. Uh, okay. He's so flustered, he's being even stranger than normal. What? You think that's an alibi? You could've just made a copy. What? <laughs> you live in the same building, after all. You could've had plenty of opportunities, I'm sure. But, 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 but... Misery me! Sorry, sir. You get your chance to give your side of the story later, again. Second time this week. The facts appear for themselves, Mr. Mustache. Yeah, you, you, you horrible Sherlock Holmes. I know, right? Sherlock Holmes always finds him as a, as a culprit. He really has found himself an arch art rival now, hasn't he? Come on now, no dilly dally. Outside, there's a carriage waiting. No curbs turn in, Mister Not Hold Esquire. I, I never imagined I'd be in this position again. But you have to help me, please, please. I'm innocent. All right, I understand. I'll come to your cell later and talk about it. Well, to be honest, it could have been a nice, slower working poison. Oh. I don't know anything. I'll see. Oh, wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. I missed it. What is it? I'll come to your cell later and talk about it. One more thing. Oh, yes. My, my poor little kitty cat. Please give him his breakfast for me. Oh yeah, we had a cat last time too. And so, his evil curse still apparently unbroken. Suzuki san found himself once again a prime suspect in a case of murder. Was it this one or the one before? That was. I don't know, I'll see. Thanks to the incriminating deduction of the great detective. Wait, is this the end? My dear fellow, that honor belongs to you. Oh, not yet. Well, at least that means Inspector Gregson is no longer here. We can examine the crime scene in more detail now. Yes, that's right. And, of course. What? Have you forgotten what the inspector mentioned before? It was the landlord, Mr. Gerdep, who found Mr. Shamspear. Ah, Mr. John Gerdep, yes. I expect we could find him in the sitting room on the top floor as usual. Right, we must remember to go and talk to him later, then. Hmm, can I observe the room yet? I can. Look at these extravagant bright costumes. Somehow they look out of place in this room, with its grim shady going-ons. This one looks like a king's attire. A king? I've always dreamt of being a king. Uh, I think you'd be more suited to be a feudal lord, a daimyo or such like. The chomage top top? The top knot? Every Japanese man wishes he had a ch chomage. I don't know, I don't know. I think those look kind of... Yeah, but okay. Oh, you look wonderful with one, and you already have a sword! Can you imagine what would happen if they walked around the streets of London with a chomage and a sword? I don't know, maybe they'd be like, oh my god, Japanese, Japanese. Look at the body. Oh, the poor man. So young to die. You suppose it was a very painful death, being poisoned as he was? I don't know. All we can do now is hope that he'll be reborn to a better life. He has the worst shoes. He has bows anywhere else I said him. Oh, I need to look at it again. Yes, I suppose you're right. I wonder. Do you think that putting our hands together in a Japanese prayer will help a British soul? Sorry? Well, I mean, I don't think it'll hurt. I mean, sure I had a reference at the ready for just such an occasion as this, actually, when someone died. This book is entitled The Beginner's Guide to Praying for the Departed. The British way. Oh my god. I'll just reread it now. One moment. And then she has super reading speed. There's quite a spine on that book, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm, can't see well here. 
Oh well, next time. As we see from the outside, the window is completely bricked up. That's so terrible. It's like, what's the point of the window? A vestige, a vestige of the former window tax that Britons had to pay. What strange things they used to tax in Great Britain. I mean, making people pay for the number of windows they had in a property. It's extraordinary. It's heartbreaking to think of the poor having to block up their windows just to avoid an unaffordable tax. Yeah, tax, not the poor! Tax the rich! Oh, what is it, Mr. Sato? You look closely. A number of the bricks are loose. Really? Oh, there are three of them. Wait, what the heck? What happened? Oh yes, it looks as though an amateur has broken out a few of them just there. I assume the window you could open and then like... Were they fake bricks that had the soap inside? Because... Because those bricks filled the whole thing and there's no way a soap could have been under the brick. So how did the soap get there? What? <laughs> Was it Mr. Shansbury who did it, I wonder? Being a lodger renting this room? Ah, uh, look at look at this, Mr. Nadahodo. On the outside, there's a little ledge. And there's something on it. What? Outside? Wait, I need to see how this looks. Wait, no, wait, 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 what? No, let me see. Er, it's so cold outside. You can feel it through this gap. It did snow all last night. It would be cold. But more importantly, what is it on the ledge out there? What are those snow-covered lumps? It's more bars of soap. Soap? What are bars of soap doing lined up on the ledge outside the window? Wait, so it's outside the window? And not like... Okay, okay, okay. So you can see it, I guess, from the outside if you take out the bricks. So just random soaps outside that you can see from the outside, but you can't see them inside, I guess? I don't know. I, I have no idea, but the pair of them look rather charming like that. I guess. Soap. Perfect. Terrific soap looks really nice. Still, that's very strange, isn't it? Bars of soap lined out outside the window. Maybe that prevents cold or something. Like salt. I think perhaps we should take one. There are two, after all. I don't think we should do that. Oh, oh dear. I, I, I suppose we could. Oh, what's this? Look here at this soap. I, I think soap... Is it one of those things where, like, you put stuff inside soap and you trade the soap so you think you're treating soap but you're actually treating other stuff like drugs and stuff like that? Because that's gonna be terrible. Do you see? In the middle there. There's a patch that's a different color. It's... it's sort of transparent, but... Some sort of fancy... <gasps> that's why he was breaking it in the middle. He was trying to put something inside the soap. Probably. Or something. Some sort of fancy design, I suppose. Only in Great Britain. It looks like the Hinomaru flag of Japan, doesn't it? Oh, wonderful. It's probably a very expensive brand. Expensive? Then what's it doing in this ramshackle old room? Mm. Okay. Look at the rough collar. Which one? I legit can't see anything. <laughs> what's this? And here we have another disproportionately large machine. This looks like a meter of some kind. Is it like electricity? Ah, uh, this is a gas meter, I think. Oh, gas. It seems that in this district, residents pay for gas as they use it with coins. Oh, wow. Ah, I see. Yes, now you've pointed it out, I can see that there's a slot here, just here, that looks like it would take a coin. Wow. There's a coin machine. What if I run out of coins? Hmm. So you mean if you put a coin in here? That's right, that would buy you about two hours of gas for lights and heating. What's light and heating? Nice. Oh. Oh, the rough collar over there on the mannequin, you mean? Hmm. Okay. Uh, I asked them to read differently. Depending on the period. So, if you were a poor person with no money, you'd have to sleep in the freezing cold? Yes, or if you were a scatterbrain with no change because you forgot to exchange your money at the bank. Thank goodness there's no meter in our office. I know, right? I like, can't imagine running out of coins. Like those coin laundry machines. Like, I don't have enough coins to exchange money, but no one's going to exchange money with me. Because they all need coins too. This is some sort of makeshift stage, I think, isn't it? Where does the audience sit, though, for the nightly Shakespeare... 
she just did he just say Shakespeare? Did they write this raw? <laughs> Is that Shakespeare or Shakespeare? What? Did they forget to change the name? Actors aspiring to the great stage must practice their art, Mr. Nahodo, with or without an audience. In fact, on a related note, perhaps you should set up a mock bench for the defense in your office. What? Then you can practice your art every single day. I'll think about it. If you promise to don a beard and play the role of the judge. <laughs> well, if if that would help you achieve your goal. This I have to say. Well, in order to cosplay. Is that it? Oh, one more. This is a gas light, gas wall light, isn't it? It must be connected to a gas pipe in the wall. Gas lights, a gas stove. London really is a city of gas. But now that I think about it, Mr. and Mrs. Gearedip had an open fire on the top floor, didn't they? Oh yes, you're right. I don't recall seeing a gas stove up there. Wait, what do you all use? Oh, use fire to cook instead of gas? Oh my god. Well, I much prefer a real fire anyway. It's so much cozier. I mean, I, I agree with that too. His name? No, I got that part. His name's Shakespeare, but they said Shakespeare plays. Unless Shakespeare is not Shakespeare, and there is actually a Shakespeare, and the Shakespeare is just an actor who does Shakespeare plays. Then sure. <laughs> oh, Sarunani, hello. Good afternoon. I know, I know. I found Shakespeare. I mean Shakespeare. There's not much on these shelves, is there? Just this wine glass and bottle, and both of them are cracked. Yeah, it's not much use, are they? How do you get nice teacups? In? What's the matter? Oh, I was just reminded of the Reaper, that's all. All of a sudden. Professor, or Professor, Prosecutor Lord Van Zeeks? Oh, Shakespeare has a similar name. Okay, okay. That makes more sense, okay. Oh, must have missed that. Thanks. Well, oh, yeah. yes, he's so reckless with his wine glasses. I was thinking it's a waste... And that he should donate some to the needy. Uh, you can suggest it next time we meet. Hmm, okay. I think that's everything. Boof. Oh my god, there's so many things to do. There's so many. Let's go to the next one. 21st February. Fire Red. Oh, the soap. Here it is. I want to see it from the outside. That's legit what it looks like. <gasps> it's the completed bars of soap he puts in this window and someone just takes it. <gasps> Isn't that near the bookstore? I think. Is that why the lady was there? Maybe? To get the soap? For that day? Maybe. Hmm. Hmm, that's what I'm thinking. That's my theory right now. With the exception of people not steal a stove. Maybe he puts them out specifically on the days he expects them to come by or something. Like, right before they come by. Or something. I have no idea. Anyway, that's that's my theory. With the exception of the top floor, where Mr. and Mrs. Gerdep live, all the windows are bricked up. Yes, that's because of an old window tax that was charged on the number of windows a property had. In order to pay less tax, the poor members of society filled in many of their windows. But the tax has since been abolished, hasn't it? So the windows could all be opened up again, surely. Unfortunately, it would appear that the residents of this district can't afford to pay to have the work done. Yes, that is a sad state of affairs. Especially for people like poor Mr. Natsume, who have to live all cooped up in a windowless room. A time to break out, bring out an axe, or I actually don't know what you can use to break down bricks, but um... Shovel or something and break down the bricks on your, by your own. I suppose it's a price you pay for living in a very cheap accommodation. It all seems rather pointless when you put it like that. Wait, that's all they can mention about it? Oops. London's blanketed in fog again today, and the sky is covered in cloud. But if you look closely in the distance, you can just make out the crystal tower being built. Oh, I see it on the far right. Ah, the Crystal Tower, yes. Centerpiece of the Great Exhibition that's to open in six months' time. 
Everyone's talking about the great exhibition of London at the moment, it seems. Oh, is this like the Shang- is it like the- the expo, kind of? The world expo? I guess, in this case. Well, it's to be the largest event of its kind anywhere in the world, with technology and scientists from all over. That kind of sounds like it. Can't wait for it myself. Do you think visiting students from the Far East like us will be granted entry? If you have money. Probably. The last great exhibition that was held in London had more than 6 million visitors, it seems. And this time, the British are determined to make it an even bigger success to outdo the Paris Exposition. Oh yeah, it is exposition. Uh, I see. That's an incredible number of people. Well, still so never dress like this. Uh, I, I added it as a new outfit for everyone in the second series. And with so many people expected to attend, we should easily be able to slip in unnoticed. There's always the honest approach of buying tickets at the main entrance, Mr. Nanhodo. Yeah, you can't get in without in without tickets. I bet. Even back then. The Garadep household and Mr. Natsumi's lodgings are in a prominent position here on the corner. Sometimes when I look at the building, I can't help feeling that it's a bit of a it's at a bit of a slant. Oh it is. It does rather look as though it would collapse in even the smallest earthquake, doesn't it? And isn't it supposed to be haunted as well? I think I might have a hunch as to why Susuki-san has such a hunchback. A bike, though. What the heck? There always seems to be a bicycle outside the Garadep residence. I read that bicycles are extremely popular all over Great Britain at the moment, in fact. And now Japan has it too, a lot of ice bikes. That one seems very warped though, especially the front wheel. Is that to make it more of a challenge to ride, do you think? Uh, no. No, I'm afraid that may be a result of the rider's incompetence. For the front wheel to be so badly warped, I'm afraid the rider may have been similarly aff afflicted. Then there's a good chance Mr. Natsume has been practicing on, his, on this bicycle, I think. Wait, why? It's a hunchback? What? Oh dear, I fear you may be right. Oh, because he has bad luck, maybe. Anyway, I think that's everything here. Oh my god, there's more. There's a snowman, right? Unless there's something in a snowman as well. Why has somebody built the snowman on some sort of pedestal, do you think? That's not a pedestal, Mr. Nadahodo. That's part of the snowman's body. Wait, what? Really? But well, already has a perfectly good body. Wait, which one is he talking about? Well, it's true that British snowmen are usually made with two balls of snow. Perhaps this is a foreigner. Now we're looking at him as if he's strange. Poor man, I know how he feels. If anything, it's Japanese and British two ball snowmen that are the strange ones, isn't it? It's two? I think I imagine two, too, but I guess I can imagine three. After all, real people do have three sections head, torso, and legs. Do you ever think that perhaps you could think about thing you think about things too much? Well. Yeah, this looks normal too, I guess. Two also looks cute. Two is a cuter version of a snowman, I guess. I think that's everything here. Here Depp's room. Twenty first February, the Gary Debs room. Here we are again. Eccentric landlord's eccentric top floor adobe. 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 I actually don't know how to pronounce that. Whatever. We're here because Mr. Gary Debs the one who discovered the incident this morning. Don't forget. Oh, his room is back again. I forgot his voice. What did I have it as? Oh well, I'll do. It might. Abode. Abode. Did I say Adobe? I was thinking about Adobe. <laughs> Probably <one. laughs> Abode. Uh, whatever. They're probably gonna overlap anyway at some point in time. Oh, uh, you chaps it. Yes, good morning, sir. Thank you for your cooperation in court yesterday. It was quite a trial. Was it yesterday? Man, two trials in a row. As for Mr. Garadab as anyone, really. Came straight back here after all that business at the Bailey yesterday. Ew, the part where he stirs his tea or whatever he's drinking with this cigar cigar thing. Ew, no, ew. Didn't expect to wake up to some more belly nonsense this morning. Imagine if, like, the, the burnt thing fell in. It's like, ew. I wonder if you wouldn't mind telling us exactly what happened, Mr. Garadab. Yes, I suppose you'd like to know about that dead loss of an actor chap in the grand room. Or, 
Those were exactly Miss Inspector Gregson's words, weren't they? His hype is empty. Oh, I saw he's been smoking this whole time. Oh. Anything of interest here in this room? Uh, I think we saw this all last time. I think you probably skipped it a lot, everything. Reverse. I want to know the story. It must have been a real shock for you this morning. I hear that you discovered what had happened. Ah, uh, well, that hopeless actor chap rises at 5 o'clock sharp every morning without fail. But at 5.30 this morning, he still hadn't lit his gas. Wait, lit the, lit the gas. How did you know he... Unless there's a... I guess there's a machine or something that lets you know, I guess? I don't know. I guess we'll see. So I went down and knocked on his door, but no badly answer. And that's when you broke into his room by kicking down the door? Well, I called him that run looking Japanese chap to do the grunt work, of course. Wasn't it a little premature to kick the door down? That man could have just overslept by half an hour. That's what I would have thought, too, actually. That's very true, Mr. Nathodo. If 30 minutes oversleeping warranted such behavior, I'd have to kick your door down every morning. Girl, stop. Privacy. Well, um, y you know, better to be safe than sorry and all that. Hmm. Is he spying? I think he spied on them. Anyway, that's my theory. Hmm. Is it just me, or is he avoiding my our gaze now all of a sudden? Except that it was a sorry situation indeed that you found on the other- on the far side of the door. We have ca- do they have cameras? I guess they did have cameras back then, technically. The victim's name is Mr. Shamsphere, I believe. Is that alright? Or is that right? Yes, William Shamsphere. Took the ground floor room three months ago now. And how would you describe him? In a word, destitute. Destitute! Well, let's face it, the only redeeming feature of that room is the cheap rent. Anyone wanting to live in a place like that is either broke or has a bali screwed loose. It's so hard to choose which category so sick I'm fall into. Oh my god, he's both of them. Mr. Narodo, it's a little rude. Who's doing research as well? Research? Into what? Shakespeare, of course. Shakespeare. Uh, read a few plays of the old bard myself, you know. Romeo and Hamlet and all that. <laughs> it sounds like Romeo and Hamlet are the Starcross lovers. <laughs> when he says it like that. Yes, William Shakespeare is, is England's most highly regarded classical playwright and author. Okay, they say here, okay, that Shakespeare is this person, and then, okay. He's known as Sao in Japanese, as you know, and many of his works have already been translated. Ah, oh, I didn't know that part. It seems in incredible that Shakespeare was shortened to Sao, though. Someone was too heavy-handed there. There were a lot of costumes in the victim's room, actually, weren't there? Of course, Mr. Natsume is a scholar of English literature as well. I imagine he and Mr. Shamsbeer would have had much in common. And now he's dead. Shakespeare interpretation discre disagreement leads to shocking murder. Let's hope it's not that. <laughs> Great title. Mr. Hadnad Hodo. Really? How rude? Did she read my mind? I didn't even say that. Yesterday's events. After Mr. Natsume's trial yesterday, you came straight back here, I believe. Didn't you? Did you notice anything strange between then and this morning? Well now, must have been about 6 in the evening by the time I got home. Snow was coming down rather heavily as I remember, and it was completely dark already. That failed actor chap was out at the time. Mr. So Garrett have noticed there was no light from his room? Or something, I suppose. Yeah, he always knows about them. Even though the window is blocked from outside, it's like, what? I'm telling you, he's like spying on them or something. Couldn't summon the energy for anything much, so I just sat in front of the fire up here. It was after 8 before Shamsbeer got back. And the chap was up until past 1 in the morning. I'll have you know how did you know? Uh, wait, I think they answered this last time either. Anyway, don't tell me if it's something in the future anyway. I'm just coming up. I'm just talking to myself a lot. Suppose he met his end some, uh, sometime after that. I was asleep by then, so I'm rather in the dark there. Well, thank you. That was very illuminating. Yeah, how did she- how did you know her? Is everything alright, Mrs. Sato? 
Well, I was just thinking. It's a little strange, that's all. Yeah, it is. Mr. Karatev, you were up here in your room all evening, if I've understood correctly. Not a bit of fan of stairs. Not with this blasted leg. Then, how is it that you seem to know? Precise movements of your tenant on the ground floor, I mean. I know, right? Yeah. That's a very good point. I can't imagine that you could hear noises from the ground floor all the way up here. Does this old man like to spy on his tenants? Is that it? I see. I know what you're thinking. It's a belly outrage. I'm an ex- I'm ex-military, don't you know? I don't go around spying on my tenants. Why would I? And how did you know, Mr. Garrett? It's the gas woman. The gas tells me everything. Oh, the, the gas? Okay, yeah. Speaking gas? What is speaking gas? Oh. You mean, if it's on, obviously they're up, and then if it's off, it's probably, probably sleeping, I guess. What on earth do you mean, sir? How can the gas tell you anything, let alone everything? Well, as you're probably aware, the gas is applied to the building by pipes. Yes, I more or less worked that out. Every room in the building is connected by a single pipe to the gas main outside. And the gas company supplies gas to properties via the main. Yes, I understand that too. Let me see if I can explain. The sale is to light the gas lamps up here. What do you suppose would happen? Well, obviously the room would get brighter. <laughs> no, not that far. Exactly, but at the same time, the lights in all the other rooms of the house would dim for a moment. What? Oh, is that type? Okay. What? They dim? Why? Because they're using the same amount of gas for everyone. Perhaps it's because when you light a lamp, a gas lamp, it briefly uses more gas than usual. And that reduces the amount of gas in the pipe with the other lamps that are connected to it? That might explain why the other lamps dim momentarily, mind it? Yes, of course, because everything's connected to a single supply pipe. Is that supposed to happen, though? It sounds rather undesirable. Jolly good point. Fact is, the gas company's pipes in these parts are pretty hopeless. Long worn out. I barely got any gas in them to start with. Opposite sides. Opposite's also true, of course. Extinguish the lamps up here, and they grow brighter in the rest of the room. Ah, right, I see. So by watching the flickering of the lamps in one room, you can determine what's happening elsewhere. We don't know which room, right? That could have been Natsumi Soseki. Got it. Oh, of course. Because when people come back home in the evening and before they go to sleep at night, what they're guaranteed to do is either light or put out their lamps and fires. What about the morning thing, though? Um, oh, wait, no. But the... Oh, okay. The windows are blocked so they don't have natural lighting, so they must use the gas then. Clever. In point of fact, the room on the ground floor and the one above it use slightly different amounts of gas. By watching the lights in here closely, I can work out almost exactly what's going on in the whole house. Gosh! That's fascinating, Mr. Garadep. Absolutely fascinating. Wait, he said the whole house... Room use slightly different amounts of gas. So it's... Okay, so it's like... Different... It gets dimmer for like the first floor whatever, or like... Less dim in a second, in the whatever floor. Okay, that type, okay. Oh well, nothing to it, really. And I can't really s oh, and I can't really see that's going to help us with the case either. What I'd like to know is why Mr. Garadev is so interested in what his tenants are up to in the first place. I feel like there's more to it than I don't curiosity. Yeah, you don't just notice their lamps the whole time, every day, every single time. I think there's something else here that I need to click. We know what that screen is hiding now. The aftermath of the fiery altercation the other day. Hmm. Don't suppose I'll be able to clear that mess up for some time now. Oh dear, this might be a very must be a very difficult situation for you. Oh, hello, Xerx. Hello, hello. Oi. I'll say, people talk about twists of fates and whatnot. But this is a twist and a half. This pipe is broken. A rotten show all around. He's clearly struggling with everything that's happened. Where's his wife again? Was he in jail? Or, uh, actually throwing a knife? I forget. Oh well. I don't think there's anything else, really.
Her single apron drying on the enormous cannon shaped clothes horse. Clothes horse. Look. No, no, Mr. Naruto. That's a real cannon. Oh. I was like, what clothes horse? It's like, oh, it's a cannon. Uh, she hurt. Okay, so she's in jail. Okay, even, okay. I knew that. I was just testing you. Piece of history, that is. Seen plenty of action on the battlefield, I can tell you. Now the old girl and I are just en enjoying the peace and quiet of retirement together. And of course, she'd come in handy if the enemy decided to launch an attack again. From your room? Okay. Is there a war going on that I don't know about? I don't know, I feel like there's nothing else here. I can't, I guess, click the sweets and then see what happens. That's an impressive collection of cakes on that fancy silver cake, silver cake stand there. I feel sure that it was full of cakes when we first investigated in here as well. Wait, it's a 40s old cake? You mean put it in the fridge? Do you have a fridge? He's quite right, haven't touched it since. Haven't done much at all since it all happened. Time's rather stood still for me, you know. Oh. Time has stood still? Now that's an interesting phrase. I might be able to use that excuse when I'm next supposed to be tidying the office. You could just tidy up, Mr. Narahodo. Yeah, tidy a room. These shelves look like they've been completely torn apart by a wild beast. Hmm, reminds me of the Battle of My Wind. My, my what? My wand, don't we know? Ah, oh, the experience of a seasoned veteran. Enemy had us surrounded on all sides. We really thought we were done for the whole Bali company. Oh my god. We're talking, taking green pounding from their cannons. So all we could do was run for our lives. Oh, I thought that story was going in a different direction, actually. Well, the whole experience taught me one thing. I can tell you. When you're done for, you're really done for. Well, I was like, when you're dead, you're dead, but okay. Ugh, that's not what a lawyer who often finds himself under fire wants to hear. Yeah, I don't know too much about British history. It's a military uniform, isn't it? A little ceremonial garbius. Been hanging on the wall ever since my retirement bash. Not in active service now, you know. Well, not with your leg. Doesn't mean much to me anymore. You could have the old thing if you wanted it. Well, it might suit Lord Van Zeke's, perhaps. Overly ostentatious outfit like this could be could hmm, could be just what he needs. Very tactful, Mr. Sato. Very tactful indeed. Hmm. Well, it's one thing laughing as I look at it. Good to see Mr. Garadev's Medal of Honor still proudly displayed on the wall. The inscription reads, for distinguished participation, if you remember. Yes, I remember. Because I remember thinking even I might stand a chance of picking up honors like that. Wouldn't know it to look at me now, perhaps, but I had my devil made dare. Devil make care days, you know. Devil make care? What did you get up to? Well, on the best now, of course. <laughs> he the best left there. He has nothing. Best not? I want to know now. He's like, uh, can't remember anything. Can't, oh, oh, the tiger thing. You look very dashing in uniform there, Mr. Garda. Wait, what? Oh, I was cleaning the tiger thing. Lion. Lion. A oh, little portrait there. Drawn by my, an art student who used to rent the room downstairs. Art student. Art student. Oh, is this related? Uh, coincidence? Oh, you look so wonderfully young and courageous and strong. Yes, well, the chap presented to me one day and asked if I'd let him off the month's rent in return. Oh, I see. So you did presumably? I probably well did not. Oh. Portrait is a portrait, but rent is rent. Eh? Yeah, it's still there, proudly hanging on the wall. Wait, I'm thinking that's actually about the girl. The chap, though. I don't usually say for guys, I feel like, so maybe not. Oh, fine, there's one more. Oh yes, those enormous mortar shells. It's quite something seeing them up close, isn't it? Didn't you see something about firing them into the barracks, Mr. Kiridab? Uh, you remember, do you? Just a little mishap, mishap that occurred during training one day. Mishap. What are you doing firing on your own men? On your own men? The captain bellowed at me. I'm not surprised. A little mishap doesn't really do it justice, does it? 
He could kill someone! Well, one has these little incidents when one's a hot-headed young private. Perhaps I should put some evidence that resulted from one of my mishaps on display. Oh, does the great lawyer, like the great detective, have to exhibit some trophies of his finest moments? Okay, I think that's basically it. Wait, I can present something? Wait, speaking of present, I didn't look at this yet. This part is a different color. It's an exquisite design, isn't it? Press the British to turn a boring bar of soap into something special. I quite like it. It reminds me of the Hin Hinomata design of the Japanese flag. I expect this is a rather expensive soap. That doesn't seem likely given who it belongs to. Mmm, why can't I take it out? Mm. Oh well. Also, I didn't think it looked that green. It looks so, like, green. Oh, we still have this? Nice. Lodgings. Attack took place here. He was going there. Or was he coming back? I forgot. It was one or two. Whatever. Oh, I still have these. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Last one. Prison. He's in prison. Again. 21st of February. Local prison. Cell 9. Well, that means I missed something. Let's go through the mall again. Oh! 21st of February. Oh, sweet. Hmm? Is he here? Already checked everything. It's all the same thing from before, right? It only takes an entire desk, doesn't it? It's really very imposing. Oh, her is great! And let's scope, yes, it can analyze anything at all, you know? I've never seen anyone actu act anyone actually using it. Well, it's its invention, so I don't know how to operate it. Why don't you get it to analyze its own operation? Lol. Oh, Runo, you're razor sharp today, aren't you? Lol. Wait, I don't think there's anything here. Are you just Iris? Um, Iris? That's incredible concentration, that is. I find it quite remarkable how she can focus on so many different things at once. But what different things? She's just typing, isn't she? Perhaps I should try drinking more herbal tea. A blend dirt from the right would be good for you, Duno. Oh, um, Iris? This girl is destined for great things, I'm sure. Hello. She only listen here's what she wants to hear, I guess. Um, looks like nothing here. Go back again. Oh, she not here. Eh? Was the scratch always there? Hmm. Actually, wait. It's everything, right? be in Garrett depth still because oh wait I missed something what's this oh, what's this looks like a part of an envelope I think yes I think you may be right perhaps it was torn off when the letter was open is that significant I do my letters like that too <laughs> well it's a little out of place perhaps when you look around the room I think everything's kind of weird there's no sign of a letter or the rest of the envelope in fact is there Ah, she's right. And yet, here we have the torn off end of an envelope. It just strikes me as unusual. I agree, we better take this just in case. Oh! Okay. Let's examine it. I can't examine it. Okay, cool. Um. Anything else here that I missed? Let's see. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do 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 Ooh, hot chocolate. That sounds delicious. Uh, 
I'm a fan of cocoa or chocolate in the winter. All this too hot in the summer for me. I'm always eating old ice drinks. Checking for everything I missed. Maybe I need to go to the Sherlock I don't want to go through all of Sherlock Holmes thing again. I'm thinking it might be the Garrett Deb. I'm missing something. Oh wait. Unless there's something else here. Do the <laughs> the thorough the thorough inspection. <laughs> no. Wait, wait, wait. Did I check the spike yet? Oh, it's not there. Okay. We summer, but nothing is even hot chocolate or hot tea. Ah, uh, I would, but my room is 30 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's not good. But yeah, sounds cool. Oh uh, wait, bum bum. That's everything. I feel like I still need to do something with you. Maybe this bar of soap. Mr. Carrie Deb, can I show you this? Oh, if it does that, I probably would be. Yeah, no, it's gonna do something. Yeah, no, tired. Oh, oh, what's up? Konnichiwa. Hello, Zemas. Konnichiwa. I captain Saipan Yatemas. Hmm, maybe he knows a bunch of stuff about this. Oh, darn it. Right, let me open that first. I can examine that now. Is this soap? Oh, it can't be right. It's just the same color. Whoever opened this envelope didn't bother with a letter open or scissors, did they? Question for everyone. Do y'all actually use like letter openers or scissors? I just tear it apart <laughs> with my bare hands. <laughs> and usually not from the envelope side. Because usually that part doesn't tear properly. I'm like the another side, but that's just me. <laughs> yes, whoever opened it was clearly someone with an unrefined temperament. Hey! And judging from the angle of the rip here, the person in question must have been right-handed. Ah, uh, I guess you could say yes, right-handed. This is a I think perhaps someone's been reading too much of the adventure of Sherlock Holmes. You can never read too much of it, Mr. Nahudo. Never. Is that it? Oh, okay. I'd like to present it, but... I'm just gonna present everything to him and just be like... Okay, no. Let me skip. Oh, it is not skip. I don't think he is gonna pay attention to anything, though. I'm gonna try everything anyway. Sometimes it's so random. When they hit all things, exactly. Okay, no, it's none of them. Okay, fine, let me just scan his room again. One last time. Nothing here, right? Yeah, nothing. Scan his room one last time, and then he'll be like, please leave. Oh, here's some books. Oh, a copy of Red's magazine! The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes is being read all over London. Isn't it wonderful? Naturally, one asks oneself if such a singular detective could really exist. But having met the chap, it's undeniable. He is most certainly sing singular. Singularly dangerous. That's genuine public opinion for you, Mrs. Otto. Perhaps it'll be, it should be reflected in the stories? Make no mistake, Mr. Nadahodo. I intend to snuff out the sort of public opinion we just heard, personally. Love. She, she a fan, man. Too much of a fan. I'm starting to see where Mr. Holmes' untainted reputation comes from now. Mmm, it's not that one. Hmm? Oh, the window? There's a good view over the wintry east end coming from up here. It's an oppressively grey scene. Racing. There's nothing, really nothing compared comparable in Japan. And down below, Briar Road, partly blanketed in snow. And the pavement where poor Miss Green was struck in the back by that knife. Thinking about it, this is the only room in this building that actually has a window to the outside world. Sometimes, Great Britain really does seem like a strange land, doesn't it? Yeah. I suppose all foreign culture seems strange at first. 
Yeah, that's also true. Imagine how an Englishman would feel on arriving in Japan seeing people with a tomaki or top knot. I don't be like weird. Well, that's a good point. It's not that one. Right. There's so many things in this room to click. Oh, that's everything. Wait, that was everything, right? Do I need to check down here? No? Okay. Ah? Uh? Ah? Uh? The only thing left is talking to Iris about every single one of these things. Oh, time to click them all, I guess. Oh, again, the shelves? There's all sorts on these shelves. Oh, when I examined it, that was like four months after. <laughs> this is four months before, oh god. There's all sorts on these shelves. Chemistry apparatus, books, papers, and lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high. I can't help feeling that the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. It looks as though it might topple, and yet it doesn't. The epitome of Mr. Holmes' brilliance. I don't get it. As it happens, I'm quite well practiced when it comes to stacking shelves myself. Just the other day, the shelf in my office finally gave way under the strain, though. It looks as though it might topple, and it does. Yes, the epitome of your disarray. Wow. Wow, girl, wow. I really don't get it. It's called a fangirl. <laughs> Everything, she's like, nope, I don't. Everything she does is beautiful. Everything I do is not. Even if it's the same thing. See, it's life through rose tinted glasses. I do like this fireplace. It's one of the best things I've seen since, since we arrived in the country, in fact. Although, I do yearn for a Japanese kotatsu. Putting your legs under a warm blanketed table is so comforting. That's good, but you have to sit on the floor, so it's like, yeah, pros and cons. Do, do be careful, Mr. Nadhodo. Don't mistakenly put your feet into the fire, will you? You think I'm a child? You'd suffer terrible burns, you know. I worry sometimes about how Suzuko-san sees me. Yeah, I know, it's like, what? It's curious how this enormous metal chest is being used as a coffee table. Even more curious to think that Iris' father's notes about Mr. Holmes' case are inside it. You mustn't look in there, Runo. Those notes are a secret between Daddy and me. And Mr. Holmes isn't somehow in on the secret? Daddy really tends to forget, you see? As soon as he solved the case, in fact. Oh, well, that's so convenient. Once when he reads one of my manuscripts, we had a terrible argument about it. Never have I solved such a case, he said. He was absolutely adamant. Sometimes I wonder if he's from another planet, don't you? Look at all these mementos of Mr. Holmes' past cases. You know, Mr. Sutho's eyes still sparkle every time she lays eyes on them. But yours don't, do you, they, Reno? Well, I have read The Adventures of Mr. Er, of Sherlock Holmes, but now, at order of Mrs. Sutho. But the trouble is, having seen the real thing in action somehow, the stories don't quite ring true for me. Luck. It's like the first thing you see makes the most imp the bet the strongest impression type of thing, I guess. Well, he does solve the cases in the end. I suppose so. Perhaps there's more to the great detective than meets the eye. Dude, I like tricked everything. They're not almost. Oh my god, it's like E equals M. Wait, what? It was. It's like E equals MC squared or whatever. It's physics. That or it's electricity, but it doesn't look like electricity actually. Or maybe it does, actually, I don't know. Ah, uh, yes, this is where you note down ideas, isn't it, Iris? So, what's on the blackboard today? A cup brew, no. What is this? Oh, I'm just playing around with ideas for the title of next month's installment. Oh, that was a mistype, I think. Another idea I had was the burial cornet. I'm really torn about which one to use. What do you think, Runa? Anything but buck up Runo, obviously. Buck up Runo, well. Hmm, I suppose you're right. I tell you what, I'll surprise you with it. You'll have to wait until next month and see. Ah, uh, so many sleepless nights. Hmm, and then the table. It always strikes me how pretty and neatly arranged this tea set is. It's my favorite one! In fact, I think it's high time for afternoon tea. Wait there! I'll fetch the special blend that I prepared for today. Wait, I didn't drink one this morning. Oh wait, no, that was six, four months later. Oh, Iris, you do love your tea, don't you? 
She looks so happy at the prospect. And after you've drunk it, I'll collect some experimental data, if that's alright. Oh my god, I'm a guinea pig! Just what is she about to make me drink? Hmm. Looks like a duck. <laughs> looks like a duck made out of paper. Has a charming little white shelf and full of charming little charming little bottles too. Oh yes, but don't touch any of those. Wait, where did where's this other go? It might explode. Wait, what? Ah, a charming shelf full of charming bottles, full of charring ingredients. You know, I really mistakenly drank one of them the other day. Oh, she said this already. What and how? I think he was lucky though. He hasn't exploded yet. Oh god. Oh god. Chemistry can be very, very hazardous occupation. It's living with Mr. Holmes that's the hazardous occupation, if you ask me. You're yeah, choosing the adventure of Barrel Coronet. Ah, oh, I only actually read the whole thing now that I think about it. I really should. Maybe I did, I forgot everything. I don't know. I have bad, I have bad memory too. If I remember correctly, this large and imposing lump of iron is called a typewriter. I think that every single one of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes blossomed from this very machine. Ah, <sighs> it's such a dreamy thought. I actually had a go on it the other day. The metal bars that move when you hit the keys got all tangled up somehow, and that made Iris angry. Well, and they should be too. Mr. Nahodo. You're ruining my dreamy thoughts. Please don't do that again. Hello. Uh, now I've made Susato sound angry as well. Wait, that's everything. What? It's also come back soon, right? Someone is going to come back soon. Unless I missed something. What? window thing thing so I'll tell you if there's something you missed oh thanks for the hint hint circle um and where do I need to go um but yeah no no spoilers unless I'm really really stuck on something This dead body looks like looks like it every something, but okay. I think prison should have something sometime soon. Actually, there's nothing here. I did check this. No. No. There's a present here, and that makes me curious of why it's there. Hmm. It says I didn't do it by right to this. Unless there's another side of it and I missed something. Nah. Nah. I still think I can, like, remove this soap thing. I don't want I think there's something on the back. Oh! Oh dear me, it seems we must be questioning for us. Oh, right here. <laughs> uh... New office. We should leave her be for a while. Oh, this thing. Okay, thanks for the hint. Oops, I clicked the wrong button. Wrong button. Oh. Well, I guess I missed something here then. Wait. I like legit clicked every single thing. Or as I thought I did. Is it the collar? Is the cup? It was the stinking cup. Ah, one of the teacups that Mr. Shamspear and his guests drank from last night. 
Don't go drinking from them, Mr. Manhodel. There's bitter poison inside. I'm not planning on drinking any, don't worry. Anyway, the cups are both empty. That's true. So, one was Mr. Shamspear's, and the other one must be the cup that Mr. Natsume was drinking from. Well, so like he said, wasn't poisoned, of course. Dun dun dun. Perhaps we should take these so we can examine, examine them in more detail further. Okay. Teacups used by Mr. Shamspear and Mr. Natsume. The one with the green line around the rim was Mr. Natsume's. Nice. That one thing. Who is this? Looks like you're having a good snoop around in. There's in fact, Inspector Gregson! But back so soon. After I threw that little Japanese fellow in the clink, I went and reported this to the investigation division. In five minutes' time, this place will be cordoned off by the yard. Oh, I see. Well, we better be leaving then. Poor Mr. Natsume must be feeling very low being back in the cell again so soon. Twice a week. I'm sure. We should probably go, huh? Huh? Did no one check if he was actually dead? I thought. Why did they not check if he was actually dead? In that case, he could have been sleeping. Like, what the heck, man? Y'all, please not do your job properly. <laughs> Y'all just assume he was dead. Was he not breathing? Like, what? Was it actually poison? He could have just been sleeping. Did you guys actually check for poison? That is what I'm thinking now. I'm like, what? What's wrong with now? Huh? Oh man, now I'm making a new voice, man. I don't know what the voices should be. Oh god, his shoulder pads. Oh god, the gems. Oh, it's so sparkly. Oh darn it, it's another actor. I already have an actorish type of thing voice for Sherlock. I don't know what some could be. Uh, well, they're gonna overlap, but whatever. Out, out! Brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player. That struts and frets his hour upon the stage, and then is heard no more. Was this Macbeth? I think I read that, but I don't remember. <laughs> now, how soundeth the next part? You've got lines. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Indeed! Oh, happy day! Oh my god, he just fell into the war. What? 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 Walking dead! Oh, he does have bows on his shoes now that you mention it. The, the fellow isn't dead at all? Yeah, you got- y'all never checked to see if he was breathing or dead. What was that nonsense he was saying, though? Like, she just has the book just, just there. I think- yes, it was from William Shakespeare's Macbeth. Did she like control F and like look at the, the lines or something? A soliloquy from Act 5, Scene 5. Shakespeare. So it was that the victim, Mr. William Shamspear, came back to life. If the man had indeed been poisoned, I know, right? It transpired that it hadn't killed him. He was taken by emergency carriage to a nearby hospital for treatment. And Inspector Gregson evicted us from the scene of the crime. Whatever that now was. <laughs> oh. This is the end? It's not. Oh, suspicious guy looking at those suspicious bar of soap that I think Olive Green is also involved too is why because we're in the area, right? 21st of February, Briar Road. Whatever do you think will happen now? Good question. What a strange situation for Mr. Natsume. Arrested for murder, but then the victim comes back to life. Whoa, it's not murder anymore. I think perhaps the victim was never dead in the first place. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. It seems very likely that Mr. Shamspear did consume poison, as we deduced. It didn't have to have been poison. I mean, it, it could have been he was just sleeping. According to what we saw in the room, at least. Or maybe he was drunk from alcohol or something. I don't know. If it was alcohol. Hmm. But was it an accident? Attempted suicide? Or attempted murder? Until the truth can be established... I imagine the police will keep Mr. Natsume in custody. 
I suppose so. Let's hope it doesn't come to anything more than a night in the cells. Yeah, second time in the in the cells. Oh, what's this? What's that man doing over there? It looks like he's trying to see into Sosuke san's lodgings. Or not his lodgings, but the the the, the actors. Is something wrong, Mr. Nadahodo? Um, excuse me. Could we have a word? Yeah. But, but he just disappeared. Okay, he teleported. He just ran off. I feel sure that I've seen that man somewhere before. Where was it? Have I seen him? I don't remember. Hmm. Oh well. Hmm. I do too, but I don't remember. Neither do I, Dinosuke. Neither do I. Well, we've done as much investigating here as we can, I think. Perhaps we ought to go to the prison and speak with Mr. Natsume again. A good idea. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, good news, guy. You're not try. You're not gonna be tried for murder. You may try for attempted murder. Twenty-first February, local prison, cell nine. Look, Mr. Natsume. Mr. Natsume, have the police finish questioning you now? Welcome, student, Mr. Natsume Esquire. Oh, e e s. What is he? Tell me. Is he a ghost? Is he here to haunt me? Let me guess. You're talking about Mr. Holmes? He always gets you into prison. He actually calls himself a great detective, Mr. Natsume, not a ghost. But, but his diabolical deductions are not of this world. They're... They've, they've, they've left me. Ah, cursed! I'm cursed, I tell you! Well, that sort of hurts. Wait, me? Credit where credit is due, Mr. Nadahodo. You were heavily involved in the, in the deduction, too. Yep. Yes, I'm mo moving on. We have some wonderful news. Oh! Not attempt, not murder, but attempt to murder. Congratulations. Clap, clap, clap. The victim that we all thought was dead has come back to life again. Again. Now, in the absolutely worst case, he can only be trial tried for attempted murder. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> attempted murder only. That's great, isn't it, Mr. Natsume? It's terrible! Wait, what? Why? Oh. I'm stuck in the cell, suffering for some silly, wrong end of the stick. Yeah, it's better than before, though. You didn't, didn't you? Confess you're the killer. Why the mustache? Hey, I'll leave my mustaches too. Cause the questions! I'm sorry to hear that. Mark that selfish shyster. Shyster. Make up your mind. Are you dead or alive? If you were going to come back to life, why bother dying? I don't think that's his fault. Wiggly wishy washy. William! Well, it seems likely that Mr. Shamespear was never actually dead in the first place. Ah, yes. That might make sense. And I'm pleased that he's alive, of course. Our lively debate last night was much fun. I'd be sad to think it was our last. Oh! Oops. <laughs> he just confessed. Uh, Mr. Natsume, does this mean that you did see the victim last night? You met with Mr. Shamspear, didn't you? Yeah, please, dude. You're just... I'm not saying another word. I demand to have a lawyer present. Um. You want to see my badge? Who do you think I am? Please. Please, Mr. Natsume. We need to hear your side of the story. Hey, why am I cursed like this? Ah, oh, wrong button. Wrong verse. What happened? His eyes are always so crazy looking. Can you tell us exactly what happened last night then, Mr. Natsume? There's nothing to tell. But, Mr. Natsume Esquire. I'm eternally grateful to you for helping me with that accursed case yesterday and today. The case that saw poor Miss Green hospitalized after she ended up with a knife in her back. It's hard to believe that was only yesterday. I know, I felt like six months ago. Haha, ha, ha, when I last did it. When I last played. After the trial was over, I trudged my weary way back to my lowly lodgings. In that evening, at past nine it must have been, I visited Mr. Shamspear. So, you did go to the victim's room then? I only expect to be in like a murder related thing again so soon. <laughs> As we feared. 
I didn't do anything wrong. I'd never been to his room before. It was the first time. Then what made you decide to go? I bumped into him when I arrived back at the house. We got chatting and developed into a discussion. But he had to go out, so I bade him farewell. That ties in with what Mr. Gerdup said. But the victim went out and came back after eight. We met again later that evening, at around nine, or just after, when I look when I took him some nice tea I brewed as a gift. Oh, okay. So it was you who brought that tea. That had been clearly been drunk at the scene then. And I suppose you were discussing the works of Shakespeare, weren't you? Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Romeo and Juliet. Who was the stronger? What? Stronger? It was a delightful debate. Oh, okay. That's... Okay, okay. Sure. I, I, I'm sure. Such a stimulating subject. Shakespeare. And the debate became very heated, so you slipped poison in Mr. Shakespeare's tea? <laughs> no, never, not at all. Team Juliet won, that was me, and when I left his room, the phlegm point fellow was f fighting fit, I swear it, Categori categorically? Okay, sure. Juliet wins. Uh. Mr. Natsume, you often say the same thing about yourself, I've noticed. That you have a cursed existence. I'm sure I've mentioned this to you before, but I've been here in the Great Britain for a year now. And in that time, I've learned that it's no place for me. It can be very trying to live in a foreign land and adapt to the ways of another culture. It takes a while. There are foreigners everywhere I look, and they all stare at me. They all laugh. Well, technically, you're the foreigner in this case. That's the, that's the impression I get whenever I go out. It makes me scared to leave my room. Ah, oh, okay. That, that, yeah. If you're that rare, I guess so, yeah. Which is why I've become a recluse. But even in my room, I find no respite from my fears. I've moved more times than I can remember. And then, one week ago, I moved into Briar Road. But why? I mean, why did you choose that place? It doesn't seem very comfortable. He said it, though. He said he was poor. Because the rent is cheap. I have so little money, it spoke to me. The rent? Obviously, there's a reason why it's cheap. Because the room is cursed. Wow. Cursed? Cursed how? I think it's into the art. Oh! <gasps> Wait, the, oh, the man! The previous occupant, the man who lived there before I took the room, died there. Maybe the other guy's also an artist. And she, like, was a fellow artist or something. I don't know. And then the guy... That she, Olive Green had on the on the stand. Maybe that's the guy who died. Hmm. Oh no! He was only a young man, but one morning he was found dead, and no one could explain why. Surely no one would want to live in a room with a history like that. Except when it's cheap. I didn't. When the letting agent recommended me the place, I wavered. But I want books, and books cost money, and a horror, a horrible history is a small price to pay. When I realized it would mean I would could buy more books, I signed the lease like lightning. Brave or blink? But after I moved in, I soon came to realize what I'd done. I, I realized- wait, he moved in one week ago. This whole two trials are like one week. What the heck? He is cursed. That room is cursed. I, I realized that- I realized the- how horrible the history was. Gosh, was it really so awful? Horrible history. I mean, about the case before. How did the room's horrible history affect you, Mr. Natsume? What happened? At, at first, it was just a feeling. A feeling of beady eyes boring to my back, watching me. Wait. I think Mr. Garadeb is doing that. I think he has like a secret camera of something or something. Or like a mirror con like contraption that can allow him to spy on people. I don't know, I, I still don't buy the thing about the lamp thing. Could have been 30 minutes overslept, but then you just like went in and it's like, what? Right? Do you think that might have just been your mind playing tricks on you? No, 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 no. My mind doesn't know any tricks. It was someone else. It's been one l l long nightmare since I was g given the, plate, the keys to the place. A nightmare? You've been having bad dreams, you mean? All, all the souls who, who've died in that room. I lean over me in my sleep. Try to strangle me. That really is horrible. That sounds like a dream, I think. It, and now I think, come to think of it, it happened again last night too. 
the very same night that Mr. Shamspear was writhing in agony with poison in his body. I was on the verge of being suffocated silently by those miserable spirits in my room. You simply must move out of that room as soon as possible. Yes, you're right. I know it. And that's why. I'm already searching for a next room with a history to call home. I think perhaps you should try to avoid accommodation with any kind of history at all. Otherwise, I'm scared that you yourself will become history. That's okay. He went, he went back to Japan. No worries. Phew. Susato-san ah, knows how to make the man listen. Well, what the heck? Wait, I need to renew this thing. This thing's not working. Right, I'm thinking Avatar. Ah. Um. I think I need updated or something. Although it should have been updated, so I think it's a bug. But darn it, I need some nice BGM. The BGM suddenly stopped. Now it's awkward. No. Oh wait, no, it's okay now. Now it's all okay. Turn this back on. Okay. I don't know why it freezes. I'll fix it one day. Of course, Mr. Lord of the Manor is worried about the curse on my room as well. You mean Mr. Garadam? Yes, he knows that if people keep dying there, he'll never be able to rent it out again. Well, that's true. I, for one, wouldn't go near the place. I wouldn't, too. There's, like... Yeah, rooms with history, like, no, can't... Even if... No matter how cheap it is. Ah, perhaps. That may explain why the landlord pays so much attention to the gas lamps and his tenants' movements. You mean because he's worried about their well-being? Wait, is that the reason? I don't know. That seems too far-fetched. He does seem to have an unusually keen interest in the amount of gas in the pipes. There must be a reason why he keeps such close tabs on the occupants of his let rooms. I don't know, I feel like he's spying on them more, but... What do you mean, he pays so much attention to the guest lamps? Oh dear, uh, no, it's, it's nothing to do with you, Mr. Natsume. Please, forget I said anything. Oh, now you're talking about me behind my back as well. What's important is that Mr. Shanspear isn't in fact dead at all. Once he's come around and he's able to tell us what happened, we'll be able to get you released. I don't think he's gonna say anything. He's... And the actor's also suspicious, I feel like. Maybe. Yes, please. Oh, I do hope you're right. Ahem, <laughs> excuse me. Inspector Wicks? Couldn't help overhearing what you just said. And on that note... I have some good news and some bad news. Oh! Which do you want first? Always! Every time! The bad news comes first. When hope is all you have, hold on to it. That's my guiding principle. Right then. Well, in that case, the good news it is. <laughs> you just ignored the guy. Huh. Sorry. But it's just a lot easier to explain everything that way. <laughs> so for that. And why did you ask me my preference? As you might have heard, the victim, Mr. Shamspear, was just unconscious. He's come around now. Yes, we saw it. Oh, yes, we saw it happen. In all its terrifying glory. I want some. I want some fries and chips now. Ugh. I want chips. Stop. <laughs> he's still being treated by the doctors, but we managed to get a written statement from him already. Don't tell me. He's gonna say, I don't remember anything, and the last guy that visited me was this guy, and I did get poison from him, and it's him. Uh, that's what I'm guessing. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Mr. Natsume? Oh, thank goodness it's all over then. I can leave the somber cell. No. Nope. Bad news comes next. Sorry, no. That's not on the cards. What? Why ever not, Inspector? Mr. Shanspear has implicated someone as being responsible for what happened last night. Implicated someone? Oh, dear. You, you don't mean? I'm sorry to say I do. Yes. He's pointed a finger at you, Mr. Natsume. Gah! Yep, you're cursed. My sweet poison did he seek it to end my life. That wicked caitiff, Soseki Natsume. No! So I'm afraid you'll be appearing in court as planned. You'll be wanting to make the necessary preparations. Uh, no! 
Well, glad you're back, Natsume-san. Glad you're back again. And so, once again, sosuke san found himself having to take the dock in the Old Bailey. Whether his room was haunted or whether he was just terribly unlucky, I knew I had no choice. The following day, I would represent him in court and do my utmost to break the curse that blighted him. Now, why are we doing this in the second version? Second thing. Why we do it in like chronological order in the first scene? But oh well. Yay! And that's the end for this part. Clap, clap, clap. Yeah, I guess obviously it's gonna. I guess it makes more sense this way. In terms of making sense, but chronologically that kind of doesn't make sense. But yeah, okay. Ooh. Oh, wait, no, wait, 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 no, nope. didn't mean to put this, this is the next day. Ooh. And that was a good round. Next is the trial part, and I'm looking forward to that too, because trial parts are always very, very, very interesting. Actually, I think I prefer that over adventure. Or inspecting part yeah anyway that's all for this time thanks for all the hints comments advices and just comments in general and probably i'll do this again next week and around the same time yeah anyway i'll post this on youtube as well anyway i'll see y'all next time thanks for joining bye bye come if you're free next time i'll mention it on my twitter somewhere see you all I'm gonna eat my leftover pasta from yesterday that I made. It has like three, four meals worth. So. <laughs> but I want chips and I blame Inspector Gregson. <laughs>